Chapter 801, Let Me Go There was a detail that stuck out in the story told by Zhang Zhu. A girl had confessed to her senior on his birthday but ended up being rejected. After that, the senior had joined his roommates to celebrate his birthday at the karaoke. When Qin Ge first met Zhang Zhu, the latter had once said that his face had been scarred at a fire that started at a karaoke center. Initially, Qin Ge did not tie the two together, but now, Zhang Zhu was acting too abnormally, so this thought surfaced in his mind. All the club members' memories during the summer holiday were blurry, in other words, someone had tampered with that period of their memories, and thus, what they recalled could not be trusted fully. Zhang Zhu was very familiar with the school and knew the details between the senior and the girl very well. Other than that, his face had been injured in a fire at the karaoke center, which matched the story of the senior a bit too perfectly. After connecting all the dots, several possibilities occurred to Chen Gu. First, Zhang Zhu was that senior, he killed the girl in cold blood and was a crazed murderer who was good at deceit. Second, Zhang Zhu was the senior, the girl had met her demise while she was waiting for him, and he happened to witness the murder. However, due to fear, trauma, or some other reason, he did not stop the killer and was wrought by guilt because of it. Third, Zhang Zhu was just an outsider or the senior's friend, he accidentally witnessed the senior kill the girl, but due to some reason, he did not expose the senior. These filled up Chen Ji's mind in several seconds. Despair, hatred, and people who give off negative emotions are sent to the eastern campus, so Zhang Zhu shouldn't be the killer. The killer not only murdered the girl but also used a very cruel method to do so. People like that would not be troubled by guilt. Sir, can I take this frame with me? Does this frame mean something special to you? Chinga asked probingly as he narrowed his eyes. After all, this belongs to the autopsy room. If you take it with you, I will have to say something to the staff responsible for looking after this place. I can't tell why, this is the first time I've seen this mirror, but after entering the room, I headed to the curtain directly like I knew that this frame would be hiding behind it. Zhang Zhu's face was eerie looking, but his expression was rather cute. From Qin Ji's perspective, a young man like that could not be the killer. Okay, you have to promise me that you won't break or lose this frame. Of course. Zhang Zhu nodded sincerely. Before Qin Ge, he was only a child who had just finished high school. Holding the frame tightly with both hands, there was a certain emotion in Zhang Zhu's eyes. This occurred so unconsciously that the young man himself probably did not notice it. Bang! When Qin Gu was talking with Zhang Zhu, a loud crash suddenly came from the front of the room. Chen Gu turned to see that Zhu Long had just turned the entire metallic operating table over. He was not a medical student, so he did not know that the operating table could be adjusted with a dial by the side. Instead, the young man used brute force to turn the table around. What are doing? You'll need to pay if you break school property. Chen Gu walked toward Zhu Long. The latter was bent over the side of the table and had poked his head under the table. Zhu Long? This devious-looking student did not reply, but his shoulders were shivering. Are you all right? Chen Gu grabbed Zhu Long's shoulders, and then the latter slowly turned around. His facial muscles were twitching, and two streaks of tears trailed down his face. His eyes were filled with panic and fear like he had just seen a ghost. Chen Gu pressed on his shoulders firmly and glanced at the operating table. Zhu Long's name had been carved by someone on the back of the table. Why would my name appear on the back of this table? Zhu Long's voice was shaking, and his body shook harder. I also wish to know why. Chen Gu bent down to use his fingers to touch the carved name. Just how much must the person have hated you to carve your name into the table so deeply? I do not know anyone at this school. Why would they carve my name here? Zhu Long kicked the table harshly and the echo was booming. Chen Gu ignored him and took out Lin Cici's phone to take a picture. His fingers touched the names that were carved repeatedly under the table before stopping at the bottom left corner. There was a sentence carved there. I've come to find you. 
You promised that once we became students at this school, you would be with me forever. Zhu Long's story was real? Seeing the sentence, Chen Gu shook his head. Zhu Long doesn't look like someone who is calculative and cunning. A lot of hoops have to be jumped through to have one's body donated to medical school. Most importantly, the university normally doesn't take in bodies of suicide victims. Stop panicking. Take a breath and find the seating chart and duty roster for this autopsy room. One would need plenty of time to carve so much underneath a table. So, the culprit should be the one who normally occupies this table. Chen Gu quickly calmed down. He and Zhang Zhu started to look around while Zhu Long stood where he was as if frozen. After a long time, he wiped away the tears from his face and used a very slow tone to say, There's no need to look, I am familiar with this handwriting. It should have been carved by my hands. You carved that? Zhang Zhu had initially been immersed in his own story, but once he heard Zhu Long say that, he snapped pout of it, and fear started to cloud his heart. Zhu Long, what do you mean by that? Now's no time to joke. I cannot remember when I did this, but I know that these words were carved by my own two hands. Zhu Long bashed his head heavily like he was literally trying to knock some sense into himself. It's fine if you don't remember it. Do you still remember what I said earlier? No one who has been selected by me to join this club is normal. I will help you remember everything. Chen Gu took out the scalpel that he had used to gouge the door lock earlier from his bag. Do not be influenced by these carvings. Why don't you try and carve your name now? Perhaps it's not what you think. Zhu Long accepted the scalpel. With shaking hands, he carved his name on the back of the table. The sound of metal scratching against metal was amplified in the quiet night. Zhu Long stopped after he finished carving the word Zhu. The Zhu was 100% identical to the other Zhus that covered the back of the table. The carvings on the back of the operating table were done by him. Ding! The scalpel fell to the ground. Zhu Long suddenly grabbed his head as he rammed it against the table. Green veins burst on his face. Grab hold of him. Chen Gu and Zhang Zhu grabbed Zhu Long by his four limbs. The latter struggled greatly. The documents inside the first operating table dropped to the ground. Sir, what came over him? We're creating too much noise. We need to leave this place. Chen Gu grabbed Zhu Long. As he prepared to leave, he noticed an old-fashioned mobile phone with a pink shell amid the documents. Chen Gu used one hand to grab the phone and throw it inside his bag, but in that moment, Zhu Long managed to struggle loose. He threw his head against the table and yelled, Let me go. Let me go. Chapter 802, Death Memory, What is going on in here? Zhou Tu and Wang Yicheng, who had been guarding the door, burst into the autopsy room when they heard the commotion. Once they got in, they saw Zhu Long, who seemed to be possessed. Come and help. With Zhang Zhu's help, Chen Gu pressed Zhu Long to the ground. The young man was young, but he was quite powerful. He seemed to be in a lot of pain, and he resisted with all his might. They were being too loud, and the building manager would arrive soon enough. We will leave via the cargo lift and bring him to the medic room. Chen Gu had the limping Wang Yicheng lead the way while he, Zhou Tu, and Zhang Zhu suppressed Zhu Long as they headed toward the lift. Sir, what happened to Zhu Long for him to become like this? Is there something wrong with him mentally? Zhou Tu's reluctance to part way intensified. He felt uneasy being in their company. Move faster, don't let anyone see us. When Zhang Zhu said that, his expression was strange. He had no idea why he would say something like that, it was as if something had triggered in his subconscious, something that he was fearful of. After leaving the autopsy room, Chen Gu clamped his hand over Zhu Long's mouth, and the group forced the young man into the cargo lift. At the same time, he heard rushing footsteps in the corridor. Someone was running up the stairs. He hit the button for the lift. Thankfully, no one was using the lift then, and the lift was still waiting on their floor. Quick! Get in! 
The door slowly closed as the footsteps approached. When the number on the panel changed, the footsteps stopped. The other party appeared to have stopped at the top of the stairs. Sir, weren't you guys checking for supernatural phenomenon? Why did Ju Long suddenly go crazy? Did he get possessed? Zhou Tu and Zhang Ju pressed Zhu Long against the lift's inner wall. The two's youngish faces still registered traces of fear. I also don't know what happened. The child has yet to tell us his full story. The lift slowly descended. Chen Gu took out the pink phone from his bag. The phone had originally been placed inside the operating table. When Zhu Long knocked the table over, the phone had fallen alongside the documents. It's a girl's phone. Chen Gu switched the phone on. The phone vibrated and opened normally. The phone is fully charged. Either someone will come and charge this phone daily, or this is a sign that this place is forever frozen at a particular moment in time inside someone's memory. There was no password, and the screensaver was that of a sweet-looking girl. She was of small stature and had that ability to arouse other people's need to protect her. Contact list, messages, history. Chin Gu scanned through the content, but his attention was gradually captured by it. In contrast to the girl's sweet appearance, she seemed to possess a horrendous personality. She retained a sweet appearance, but the girl's phone was filled with many pictures of autopsied animals. This is madness. Cameras were not allowed inside the autopsy room, so obviously, the girl had violated the school rules. Looking through the photo album was a strange experience. The cute pretty selfies contrasted greatly with the macabre pictures of animal carcasses. Appearances can be deceiving. Chin Gu turned to glance at Zhu Long honestly, it did cross Chin Ji's mind that Zhu Long might have harmed the girl, but after looking through the phone, Chin Gu realized that might not be the case. When Zhu Long saw those carvings, he kept screaming, let me go. There was no guilt or remorse in his voice. Instead, there was plenty of fear, so his fear of this girl should be authentic. Zhu Long was 1.83 meters tall, even though he as on the lanky side, the young man packed a punch. Why would a person like that be afraid of a sweet-looking little girl? Ding! The lift arrived at the first floor, and Chen Gu noticed that scent against. It seemed to come from the corner of the elevator. Come, let's leave this building for now. Chen Gu waited for the other students to leave before stepping out of the elevator. He sniffed at the corner of his shirt, and a scant scent of decay reached his nose. The smell inside the elevator has stuck onto me? Perhaps this work outfit has been worn by a ghost before, and the smell has seeped into the outfit. Chinga took one last glance into the lift, and his eyes caught the words on the doors, access only allowed for cargo, not for normal use. There's a cargo lift in the Eastern Campus Lab building as well. What kind of cargo are they being used to transport? Why would this strange smell be left behind? Chinga had an answer in his heart, but he could not yet confirm it. Walking out of the building and as the wind outside caressed their faces, Zhu Long finally calmed down somewhat. He stopped bashing his head, but like a scared kitten, he refused to meet their eyes and wished to curl into a ball. Zhu Long, don't be afraid. I'm here now, so no one can hurt you. Chin Gu tried to console Zhu Long, but the latter's emotions were very unstable. The way he looked at Chin Gu aroused a sense of pity. There's no need to panic. After a long time, Zhu Long somewhat returned to normal. His clothes were soaked by cold sweat. Standing alone in the shadows, he sucked in the fresh air greedily. Tell me, why did you start to scream earlier? Are you hiding something from us? Chinga knew that the lab was not safe, so he led the students nearer to the isolated wall. I also don't know why. My brain could not remember anything, but my body retained that instinct. I had to leave that room, I had to run away. It's a hard to describe feeling. It's like. Zhu Long lifted his head to show his pale face. It's like I once died in that room. You still cannot remember anything? Chen Gu took out the pink phone. I can help you jog your memory. If you remember anything, tell me instantly. Okay. 
Zhu Long looked at Chingu nervously. Do you know this girl? Chingu opened the phone's photo album and gave Zhu Long a glance of the picture inside. Zhu Long initially did not have any reaction, but after a while, he suddenly started to dry heave. What's wrong with you? A cute girl like this is making you want to vomit? Zhou Tu patted Zhu Long's back lightly. When you're done, answer my question. Do you know her? Chen Ge asked in a stern voice. He was a bit different from before. Zhu Long's face was as white as paper. It did not seem like he had any energy left to speak, so he just shook his head. You don't know her? Then how come her phone is filled with the chat history between you and her? Even inside the contact list, there is only your name and phone number. Chinga knew that this was the world behind the door, and most things were probably weaved from the victim's dying memory like this mobile phone. The mobile's real owner probably did not exist at this school, and the phone was probably created from Zhu Long's memory. That would explain why the phone only contained content related to Zhu Long you knew her and probably even killed her? Chen Gu narrowed his eyes, and his lips curled into an angle. I didn't kill her. It's her. Veins burst on Zhu Long's face. He pressed down hard on his head and forced out those words between his clenched teeth. She's the killer. She's the killer. Chapter 803 Hope and Despair Zhu Long was acting up again. His expression was severe, and his eyes were bloodshot, but strangely enough, other than blood streaks in Zhu Long's eyes, there were also tears. He looked like was in plenty of pain. The group worked together to drag Zhu Long to a more secluded place, but through this process, they still attracted some attention. Thankfully no one gave chase after them. Zhu Long flipped over the operating table in the autopsy room, and this might cause the admin staff to come chase after us. Worse than that, Zhu Long carved another Zhu character on the back of the table, which might trigger the culprit in this school. Chen Gu was very careful. Whether they were exposed or not, he would always plan for the worst. On the surface, the western campus looks normal, but that is because there is something here to maintain the rules and regulations and to transport the negative emotions to the eastern campus. When the staff see the additional Zhu on the back of the table, they will realize that there is a problem with one of the students. They quickened their steps. Chen Gu was not betting on his adversary being an idiot, all he could do was leave the crime scene as soon as possible. Sir, let's hurry and get him to the medic room. He looks like he's seriously ill. Perhaps even before joining our club, this kid hid his real physical condition from the school. He might have a mental illness history. Zhou Tu did not wish to stay with those strange people one moment longer. He planned to take Zhu Long to the medic room and then leave to find a guidance counselor and ask to see if he could leave this club. If that did not work, he would sacrifice the credits. Compared to the additional credits, his life was more important. You think he has a mental illness? In the midst of running away, Chin Gu did not have time to act like a kind teacher anymore. Slightly turning his head, Chin Gu looked around. There was a smile on his face, but when Zhou Tu saw his smile, he felt the grip of a deepening chill. This Mr. Bike seemed to have two personalities, sometimes, he was very warm, but other times, he was hard to get close to. No, no, that is just my speculation. After all, you have to admit it is very abnormal for a normal person to scream something about a killer and being killed. Zhou Tu nudged closer to Wang Yicheng. Zhou Tu, no matter from which perspective, you have no ground to judge him. From how I see it, you're the one with the sickest illness of all the members. Chen Ge paused after a while and added with a smile, of course, that's excluding myself. What are you talking about? Zhou Tu was both afraid and angry at Chen Ge, and his tone was not as friendly as before. I know you won't believe me now. Chen Ge held Zhu Long and continued without raising his head. But when I take you to the art club and you see the scene from your dreams, you might even be more affected than he is now. W.H., what? Why? Zhou Tu had a feeling that Chen Gu was not joking with him. Because Zhu Long is just one of the segments to his painting, 
but you're the one with the paintbrush. Chenga had been working for several years already, and coupled with the trials given by the black phone, his experience was totally different from that of the children. Zhou Tu did not dare look Chenge in the eye. His right hand twitched slightly. His muscles were already starting to remember some things. This kind of reaction would only occur in someone who had spent a long time painting. Zhu Long hugged his head and yelled and heaved. His eyes were bulging out of their sockets and tears streaming down his face. We're still too in the open. Let's get closer to the wall, Chen Go ordered Zhou Tu and Zhang Zhu. The three of them worked together to control Zhu Long, sir, are we sure we shouldn't be taking him to the medic room? Zhang Zhu was worried as well. He looked at the calmness in Chen Ji's eyes. He felt like Chen Gu was not thinking about saving Zhu Long, he was actually trying to find a quiet place to kill and bury the poor boy. The medic room is for those with sicknesses, he is not sick. He is merely taking back what belongs to him. Chen Gu needed help from those who could give it to him without hesitation. Any kind of recovery comes with a price. When he regains his memory, he will thank us. I am worried that, before he finds his memory, he will first lose his life. After all, memories can be reforged, but there is only one life. Zhang Ju very naturally said that memories could be reforged, it did not even cross his mind that it was a strange thing to say. There is only one life? Chen Gu leaned closer to Zhang Ju and stared at his face. Think back to that big fire and the things that happened at the hospital. Are you sure the only thing that the fire took away from you was your fair skin? Wang Yicheng was the first to join the club. Even though he also thought that Chen Gu was acting quite scarily, he insisted on the kindness of this Mr. Bai. We should listen to our teachers. I'll come and help. Try to keep up, and don't get left behind. The group moved a few dozen meters, and Zhu Long already felt more like himself. He gasped for air, but his gaze was sharper than before. I'm fine now. I'm so sorry for the trouble I've caused. Zhang Ju and Zhou Tu let go, leaving Chen Ge, the only one who was holding Zhu Long. His chest was rising frantically from his great gasps for air. Several deep gouges were left on his face, and his hands were covered with bloody scars. Have you remembered anything? Chen Ge raised the pink phone. Whenever Zhu Long saw the girl's face on the screensaver, his condition would worsen like he was losing his breath. According to the chat history, you two love each other, at least, you believe that. Why would you act so frightened before your lover? What kind of girl is she? What did she do to you? With each of Chen Ji's questions, Zhu Long's face whitened further. If not for the support that Chen Gu gave him physically, he would have fallen already. I don't know, I swear. I haven't sent any of these messages, I have no memory of doing that at all. Then, what memory do you have? Chen Ji's hand that was holding Zhu Long slowly tightened, and he looked around alertly. I can only remember her name is Gao Jia. The name suddenly popped up in my mind. Looks like all that knocking wasn't for naught. Congratulations, you're one step closer to the truth. Chen Ji's hand landed on Zhu Long's shoulders lightly as he tried to loosen the man's taut nerves. Are you feeling better? Yes, thank you, sir. I can walk on my own now. Zhu Long used his shirt sleeve to wipe his face. I mean, do you want to take a look at this phone yourself to regain more memories that you've lost? Chen Gu wished to know how Zhu Long had ended up at the school. Only by knowing that would he have a chance to find the way out. The school's secret was hidden among the students' missing memories. Even though those memories were filled with despair, there was no better idea because hope was hidden among them as well. Zhu Long did not reject Chen Gu. After remembering the girl's name, he seemed to have gained some immunity against the content of the phone. He looked at the phone with his both eyes. Zhu Long's gaze wandered alternatively between the sweet loving messages and the pictures of grotesque gore. After a while, he started to dry heave again. When she was chatting with me, what kind of emotion was she experiencing? Did she treat me as one of her projects from the very beginning? 
Was she admiring her work when she was sending these messages with me? Chapter 804 Kind Gay's terror of unknown origin came and swallowed Zhu Long. His body felt hollowed out as he slowly sank into a dark abyss. He felt deserted and trapped. Calm down. Chin Gu shook Zhu Long's shoulders with great strength, and finally, the latter's dispersing gaze began to focus. You're getting better. This time, you didn't faint or scream. So now, what else did you remember? Nothing. Zhu Long was slowly getting used to this. His tone of speech was already different from before. The youthfulness and naivete of youth was disappearing, and in its place was something else. The young man was slowly changing, and he himself did not even realize it. Looks like there's not enough stimulus. Certain things could not be pushed. Considering Zhu Long's physical condition, Chin Gu did not pressure him further. You should keep this pink phone, your memory is locked inside. Most of the content inside it is real, but you have merely forgotten all about it. But I don't even recognize the owner of this phone. Then why would a girl's name appear in your mind after you took a look at the content? Zhu Long had no answer. For a normal person, this was very scary. Zhu Long gripped his head tightly. This feeling of something being on the tip of his tongue was driving him insane. Sir, since we now know the, the owner's name is Gao Jia, why don't you use your power to get the staff to help us find this girl? Seeing her in person will perhaps explain everything. Are you sure that this girl by the name of Gao Jia also studies here? Chen Gu looked at Zhu Long. There was pity in his eyes. The world behind the door was weaved from the victim's despairing memories, but the person who caused their pain was not trapped behind the door. That was the ironic thing about this whole event. The victims were trapped behind the door, but the culprits kept on living in real life. If she is not a student here, then why would her phone appear in the autopsy room? Zhu Long could not understand why Chen Gu did not understand such simple logic. Even if we manage to find her, what she tells us might not be the truth. You'll need to depend on yourself to regain the memory that you've lost. Chen Gu shoved the pink phone into Zhu Long's hand. Keep this and use it to search for your lost memory. If you remember anything, tell me immediately. Mr. Bai, now that Zhu Long is fine, where are we supposed to go? Zhu Long held the mirror frame that he had taken from the autopsy room and looked at Chen Gu with a glow in his eyes. It's about time we end the activity today, right? It's very late. If we linger outside any longer, we'll be locked out of the dormitory. Zhou Tu sighed in relief when he saw that Zhu Long was more himself again. If you return to the dormitory now, you might forget everything that happened tonight. Of course, that is if you manage to survive, to see the sun rise, for another day. Chen Gu was definitely not speaking like a teacher should. Zhou Tu even started to be fearful of Chen Gu. What do you mean by that? Just like how you cannot remember what happened during the summer holiday after your high school graduation, the few of us and the things that we have done tonight will disappear from your memory. Chen Gu looked around calmly. Do you wish to forever relive this one day, or place your trust in me? Together, we'll help find our own true selves. I'd rather the former. Zhou Tu did not want to take any risk. A recurring dream might be scary, but that was not as scary as spending more time with this strange, dangerous man. There is no hurry in answering. This world is slowly changing. Why don't you make a decision after Zhu Long regains more of his memory? Chen Gu moved his gaze away from Zhou Tu to Zhang Ju. You're a new student here, but you know a surprising number of things. Perhaps I've also lost some memories. Zhang Ju attempted a smile, but as the muscles pulled on the scorched side of his face, it transformed into a rather ghastly expression. This is such a coincidence. This school is so big, but the few of us who stand out happen to gather together. It is indeed quite a coincidence. Chen Gu did not sense any dangerous presence from Zhang Ju. Later, you and Zhou Tu can follow me to the eastern campus. The memories that you've lost should be able to be found there. The eastern campus? I'm not sure that's such a good idea. 
When I first arrived at the school, the counselor told us that entry to the Eastern Campus is strictly forbidden, and he also advised us against interacting with the students there. Zhang Zhu touched the wound on his face. He also said that once there were students who attempted to trespass into the Eastern Campus, and they are there to this day as punishment. That's right. I got the same warning from a senior on my first day here. That place is only filled with trash from the Western Campus. Stay there for too long and the stench will stick to you, and you can't ever return, Wang Yicheng said cowardly. Of all the members, he was tiniest and looked the weakest. The Western Campus is an enclosed campus while the Eastern Campus has interactions with the rest of society, and because of that, the situation there is more than a bit chaotic. Fights and brawls are an everyday occurrence, and there have been reports of serious cases happening there. Looks like you have some misunderstanding about the Eastern Campus, but worry not, seeing is believing. Later, I'll take you there to see the truth with your own eyes. Chen Ji's lips curled upward. Those students seemed to have the wrong idea about the Eastern Campus, the misadventures there were more serious than mere fights and brawls. It was a hellish location where ghosts and specters roamed. A careless move could make one lose one's life. I also think that the counselor was merely trying to scare us. Perhaps the students there are just slightly harder to educate. Zhu Long's face was the color of alabaster. He was holding Goa Jia's pink phone. His eyes were wet, but they were still bloodshot. Bro, even in this state, are you standing at Mr. Bai's side? The way Zhou Tu looked at Zhu Long, like how one would look at a mental patient. You don't understand that feeling. You cannot remember it even though you're sure it has happened before. Mr. Bai has helped edge the door open a little, so of course, I am in his debt. I don't understand? Well, in that case, I'm not going to stick around to try to understand either. Zhou Tu walked to Chen Gu. Mr. Bai, I. Haven't you been meaning to go to the art club? Chinga asked with a smile. I can take you there. Really? There was an obvious change in Zhou Tu's tone. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me too soon. Do you know where the art club is situated? Chinga leaned closer to Zhou Tu's day where. Zhou Tu had a very bad feeling forming. The lab building in the eastern campus. The scenery from your dream can all be found in the eastern campus. Now, would you go there with me to take a look? Chin Ji's question was like that of a demon. It caused Zhou Tu's hair to stand upright. I can tell you assuredly that your dream is real. Your unique condition is probably due to the fact that your forgotten memories are, in essence, different from those of the other kids. They are related to the foundation of this school so that is why this is happening to you. Chen Gu leaned closer. Well? Would you like to go? The truth is on the other side of this wall. Chapter 805, Last Story It's in the Eastern Campus? Zhou Tu was obviously hesitant. He had received warnings from both the school and the seniors to stay away from the Eastern Campus, but they did not give a specific reason. However, from their tone, he could tell that the Eastern Campus was a very dangerous place. You guys have a deep misunderstanding about the Eastern Campus. It is actually not that different from here, but there are two different administrative styles to the management. The people there live in actual terror, but you guys live in a fake happiness. Chen Go looked into Zhou Tu's eyes. Compared to you lot, they are actually closer to hope, because at least they know who they are and know how to achieve salvation. Chen Gu did not lie to Zhou Tu, be it the students from Eastern or Western Campus, they were both trapped in the school. The students of the Western Campus had their memories altered and kept repeated the life created by the culprit, the students of the Eastern Campus at least knew how to look for a scapegoat to try and find a way to escape. The students from the Eastern Campus are closer to hope? But I heard only trash that are not wanted by the Western Campus are sent to the Eastern Campus. Zhou Tu was slowly persuaded, but he still felt quite unsettled by the whole idea. No matter the standard use, any school that treats their students as trash has to be a trashy school itself, wouldn't you agree? 
Ching Ge reached out to point at the tall wall, separating the two campuses. Do you know the purpose of this wall? What is it? It's because the school is afraid of the world's going out of control. They utilized various methods to reconstruct societal order, but humanity is the most complicated thing in the world. No matter how they try to alter the memory, once something happens, the scar that has been left behind will forever be seared on the heart. Not remembering anything doesn't mean that it has not happened, so the school's plan is destined to fail from the beginning. Chinga kept saying things that the members failed to understand. They had no idea why Chingu would say these things, but they found themselves agreeing with him. Those young men were naturally curious. Chinga kept telling them the truth about the school, and he finally managed to arouse their interest. So, are we going over there now? Honestly, I still have a hard time believing that the art room in my dream really exists within the eastern campus, Zhou Tu whispered cynically. Now is not the time. Chen Gu turned to glance at this shadow. The shadow from room 413 was still alive, but its body had changed. If one looked closer, one would realize how Chen Ji's shadow was different from others. It was dark as ink like it was capable of swallowing the light. It seemed to have grown stronger. The potential of the shadow was a trump card for Chen Gu. After it had woken up, he would lead the students to the eastern campus and go after abandoned specters. That way, he could not only improve his own power, he could muddy the waters at the school to provide some distraction for the other killer. Now is the time to gather strength. Before the culprit notices a small bug like myself, I need to gather as much strength as I can. Chen Gu turned to look at Wang Yicheng. He knew a thing or two about the other members' stories, but he knew the least about this limping boy who had been the first member to join his club. The next location we're going is Wang Yicheng's dormitory bedroom. My bedroom? After hearing that, Wang Yicheng gave a strange reaction. He quickly shook his hands. I don't think that's a good idea. There's nothing worth seeing in my bedroom. When you said that, your tone was higher than normal, and you also spoke faster. Other than that, your eyes were fluttering. You are really bad at lying. Chen Gu touched Wang Yicheng's shoulder lightly. Why won't you let us go there? What are you worried about us seeing? I. Wang Yicheng thought about it for a long time but could not come up with an excuse. Finally, he turned his head away. It's nothing. In that case, let's go now. Sure. Wang Yicheng lived in room 413 of the western campus, while Lin Cici stayed at room 413 of the eastern campus. The numbering of the room was similar, but in room 413 of the western campus, other than the fourth bed, the other beds were occupied. Conversely, on the eastern campus, it was the total opposite, only the fourth bed was occupied, and the others were empty. We should keep our club secret from other people. Try to keep a low profile. There are staff like myself at the school, but there are also other staff who might not share my views. Chen Gu was on high alert. They had created too big a commotion at the lab building, so the school might have started an investigation already. There's not much time left for me. After checking room 413, we should find a place to hide for a while. There were four floors in total in the Western Campus male dormitory. The number of students was several times higher than the number on the Eastern Campus. It was not yet time for lights out, and the time they arrived was the most chaotic, lively time at the dormitory. The sound of washing, plastic basins falling, and chatting could be heard when they stood outside the building. This building looked similar to the one on the Eastern Campus. Chen Ge acted very normal as he entered the first building with the four students. The door to the manager's room was closed, but the window was open. A middle-aged woman in her fifties was humming a ditty inside, she seemed to be in a good mood. There was a notice stuck next to the window. It spoke of various warnings like the using of high-voltage electrical appliances and using a stove fire in the dormitory. If I remember correctly, the notice on the board in the Eastern Campus Dormitory read, due to the recent vicious crimes happening around campus, students are forbidden from leaving the dormitory after lights out. 
A wall separated two different walls, just like how it was inside and outside the door. Walking down the corridor, the group finally reached the door to room 413. This dormitory is no different from other dormitories. I don't understand why we're here. Wang Yicheng opened the door. Even when he walked into the room, his roommates treated him like an invisible person. They kept doing their thing, and no one even acknowledged his presence. After Wang Yicheng took several steps into the room, the boy who had the bed closest to the door suddenly pulled off the cover to glare at him. How many times I've told you this? Close the door after you enter. I know you've injured your leg, but have you injured your ears as well? The boy used a very harsh tone, it sounded like he hated Wang Yicheng for some reason. The reason he didn't close the door is because someone else is coming in. If you want an apology, we can apologize on his behalf, but I wonder, what kind of apology do you require? Chen Gu grabbed the doorknob and entered the room. He looked at the occupants. When the lad saw Chen Gu, his courage dissipated. With a growl, he pulled the cover back. Mr. Bai, this is bed number four. Because it is unoccupied, we use it to store our luggage. Wang Yicheng pointed at the fourth bed. Several suitcases and bags of trash were left on it. In this bedroom, only Wang Yicheng's stuff was left beside his bed, the other people threw their stuff onto bed four. Chen Gu was very familiar with bed four because he had slept on it on the eastern campus. Walking up to the bed, he noticed that even though no one used this bed, there were bed sheets and covers. They had been made dirty by the luggage and trash that was left there. Chapter 806, Zhang Ye's Side Story, Let's Get Married Dark Clouds hung so low over the city that it felt like one could reach them by raising one's hands to the sky. Li Man stood next to the window, watching the raindrops slide down the window, leaving their transient trails. The clock on the wall ticked as if in rhythm with the rain outside. Time was passing slowly inside the quiet room. 5.30 p.m., it's about to call it a day. Li Man stretched lazily. She moved the plant on the windowsill back into the room and walked to her table. She took the plaque that declared the building to be the government's marriage registry office into the drawer. As if that was not clear enough, the large words on the wall read, Administrative Office, for the Marriage License Registry. With the rain pouring, I doubt there's anyone coming. Li Man hummed a ditty to herself as she started to clean. She was the only one left at the office, her colleague who took the table next to hers had already got off work 15 minutes earlier. I'm sorry, but is this where you get marriage licenses registered? The office door was pushed open, and a magnetic male voice came from the entrance. From the voice, Lee Man believed that it belonged to a handsome figure. Lee Man lifted her head and saw a man wearing a black raincoat standing at the door. He looked rather normal but there was an indescribable presence about him. Yes. Are you here to get your marriage license? Li Man studied the man carefully. This was the first time that she had encountered someone who came to the office to register their marriage while wearing a raincoat and carrying a large, heavy backpack. Yes, I made my appointment online. Let me check. What's your name, sir? Chen Gu. Li Man keyed the name into the computer, and out came the man's appointment request. I was just leaving work, so I hope you don't mind if we go over this quickly. Have you brought all the necessary documents? The ID cards for both parties, and the paper proof that neither parties are blood-related across three generations. I've got it all here. The man opened the backpack and started to rummage through it. Li Man thought that she heard a cat. Out of curiosity, she glanced into the man's bag. The backpack was stuffed with a recorder, a comic, a doll, a ballpoint pen, and a furry, white cat. Here. The man placed all the required documents on the table. Everything should be here. I've met the girl's family, and thankfully, they approve of me. Looks like you came well prepared. Lee Man registered the man's information, and when she prepared to work on the woman's information, she realized that the woman's IC card could not be used. The computer was unable to read the card's chip. 
She glanced at the name on the female's IC card, and she noticed something strange. The man before her had come to apply for a marriage license. He had prepared everything and even brought a cat with him, but weirdly enough, his fiancée was nowhere to be seen. Sir, I'm sorry. Lee Man stopped working. You're here to get married, right? Yes. Then, where is your girlfriend? How do you plan to get married alone? Lee Man flashed an embarrassed smile. Both parties have to be personally present to apply the license. The wall continued ticking, and the rain outside increased in intensity. The man bit on his lips and lifted his head to look at Lee Man she is here. She is just standing behind me. The platter of the raindrops appeared to intensify, and the air in the room seemed to freeze. Sir, please stop joking. Both parties have to be present to apply for a marriage license. If you insist on this, I'm afraid I can't help you. Li Man held her hand over her chest. For some reason, she started to have trouble breathing. She is really here. We are inseparable. Wherever I am, there she'll be. The man's eyes were shining with clarity, and he claimed that with insistence. Seeing the seriousness on the man's face, Lee Man held the ID cards in her hands, and a possibility flashed in her mind. Looking through the other documents, Lee Man found out that there was a death certificate for the man's fiance. The time of death was several years ago. Sir. Lee Man wanted to say something else but seeing the sincerity and immovability on the man's face, she started to hesitate. She glanced at the man's backpack, and the objects inside peeked out at her. Are those the things left behind by the girl? Do they represent the good memories and good times that they shared together? Perhaps the cat was the girl's pet when she was alive. In that instant, Lee Man understood why the man would bring so many seemingly unrelated things to the office to register a marriage. The man's claim that his fiancée was always with him took on a different meaning. With tears pricking her eyes, Lee Man held the girl's ID card. She did not know what to say, whether to offer words of consolation or reveal the horrible truth to him. Her lips slowly opened, but Lee Man could not make herself say those works. She looked at the man before her who was as innocent as a child, and her heart was twisted by a myriad of emotions. She forced the smile to stay on her face. Sir, you must have loved her dearly, right? How did you meet? She was the one who started to pursue me. She sent me the first love letter that I have ever received in my life. The man's gaze took on a faraway look like he was going on a trip down memory lane. Our first date was at an abandoned school. Abandoned school? Your first date was at such a unique location? It was Western Jiaojiang's private academy, the place means a lot to her. I stood inside the dance hall, where she used to practice daily. We stood back to back, and she told me her life story. Li Man listened quietly, and a romantic picture appeared in her mind. On a quiet, fateful night, a couple shared their memories inside an abandoned school. The school had once been crowded, but they were the only two left. Standing back to back, counting on each other for support, this could be the plot for a sad movie. The second date was at a mental asylum, she wore a fiery red dress. She took my breathing away, and her beauty shone like the sun. Mental asylum? It's because of my parents, so that day, I... Okay, I understand. I'm sorry. Before the man could finish, Lee Man apologized. She did not have the habit of tearing into people's sad pasts. Perhaps his parents were a second scar in the man's heart. Our third date was in a skyscraper. I cornered the man who once hurt her inside an elevator and gave him a lesson he would never forget. You sure love your girlfriend to have done so many things for her. I bet if she knew what you've done for her, she would be very happy. Actually, she was just next to me at the time. The man's expression softened as he thought about the elevator, covered with black hair in the ghost stories society's lair. It must have been very romantic and warm. Lee Man's impression of the man before her continued to improve. Our fourth date was in the underground morgue of a medical university. She hid the fact that she was injured from me. 
We sat quietly together, and she stole a cheeky hug from me. The man's voice was mellifluous. It was coarse with the maturity of age. As he talked about his past, Li Man was so caught in the image that, in her mind, she pictured that she overlooked the strangeness of having an underground morgue as a date location. Our fifth date was on the roof of a building in a small town. That day was very similar to today, it was raining heavily, and I leaned against her. Compared to the previous locales, the location this time was so normal that it took Li Man by surprise. Did you confess to her that day? The man nodded lightly. I was standing on the highest spot in the town and shouted out the words in my heart to the world. I do not think there is any promise more romantic than promising to be stuck together like a man and his shadow. Wow. Lee Man had heard many people's stories before, but none were as shocking and interesting as Chin Ji's. Perhaps because she had seen the death certificate, that knowledge colored her view of the story. And then? Then? Chen Gu sucked in a light breath. She went into a deep slumber, and it took her a long time to wake up. I stayed by her side, waiting for her return. The proof of death stuck into Li Man's heart at that moment like a steel needle, and her tears dropped without realizing it. Lowering her head, Li Man pretended to look for some stuff. While the computer was hiding her face, she swiftly wiped her tears away. She already knew how the story was going to end. No one spoke in the office, and after a long time, it was the man who broke the silence. His hand fell on the seat next to him that was obviously empty. However, from the look on his face, it felt as if he was staring lovingly at his fiancée who was sitting right there. Our sixth date. It was no longer important what the man said next. Lee Man already knew how the story would end. After the man's fiancé passed away, he trapped himself inside a cage known as love. He deluded himself into believing the woman that he loved was still alive. Due to love, he refused to believe the fact that she was already gone. Her hands were pressed together until her fingers were white. Li Man wanted to tell Chinga the truth, but she could not bring herself to burst his bubble. She buried herself behind the computer and keyed in all the information on the related forms. She wished to help the man fulfill his dream, but when she pressed the enter button, the system told her there was an error. The girl had died several years prior, and there was no information on her in the People's Registry. Reality poured a tub of cold water on Lee Man. She glanced at the man's face that was still caught in his memory. She bit on her lips. Sir, our server does not have the complete data, the system is currently updating. Unfortunately, I am not able to help you at the moment. Why don't you come back in a week? Lee Man had a desperate wish to help the man, she was willing to go to the extent of going outside the law. Okay, thank you so much regardless. The man stood up, slowly. He packed up all of his stuff and prepared to leave. When he was at the door, he suddenly removed the raincoat and put it over his head as if there was another person standing next to him. Zhang Ya, don't stray too far away from me. The rain is getting heavier. Be careful. Li Man saw everything clearly inside the office. Other than the man himself, there was no one else underneath the raincoat. Watching the man walk away, Li Man wiped the corner of her eyes. Perhaps this is true love, everything starts and ends with you. Chapter 807, The Possible Door, There are so many things on the bed. If the occupant of bed 4 comes back later, where is he going to sleep? Chen Gu sounded like he was talking to himself. Do you expect him to sleep in someone else's bed? Ever since he walked in, the students in room 413 had kept subconsciously and consciously catching glances at him. After all, he was wearing the staff uniform, it was little wonder that he was catching some eyeballs. Are you one of the teachers? The tall, thin student who sat on the bed across from bed 4 asked. He wore glasses with very thick lenses, and they gave his face a distorted look. Bed 4 is unoccupied. We're merely rationally using the space by placing our stuff there. The bed is made with the covers and sheets, and you're telling me it's unoccupied? Chen Gu looked at the student with a smile. 
Most likely, it's just that you cannot see him. Be careful when you sleep at night. Do not sleep on your side as you might turn around to find another person sleeping behind you. Chen Gu stood by bed four and moved all the luggage from the bed to the ground. This is sad. You're taking advantage of a ghost. Hey! Don't just touch our stuff like that. The man under the cover poked his head out again. I'm trying to save you, this bed has an owner, and he has been roaming about this school. Chen Gu had seen many things in room 413 of the eastern campus, so he had high expectations for the same room on the western campus. You also know about the rumor of the fourth bed in room 413? The bespectacled man asked with a stern face. But that is merely an excuse we use to scare Wang Yicheng. You don't seriously believe it, do you? You'll know the answer to that soon enough. After clearing away the bed, Chin Gu removed the bedsheet and pillow pillowcase to ensure that nothing was hiding there. You said bed 4 might be occupied, so why are you rummaging through his things like that? The thin student pushed on his glasses. He did not seem to like Chin Gu, perhaps because Chin Gu took Wang Yicheng's side and that against their principle. It doesn't affect me. After all, I don't live here. If he's angered, you will be his first target. Chen Ji's way of speaking was different from how the students imagined how a teacher would speak. Of course, he was a fake teacher, so he did not care about the impression he was making. Pulling away the bedsheet and cover, Chen Gu turned his attention away from the students and focused on the bed frame. There were five fingerprints left on the edge of the bed that was closer to the wall. This wouldn't be one of your pranks, right? Chen Gu used his fingers to dig at the print. He then sniffed at his finger, it was definitely dried blood. Why would there be blood on bed 4? Sir, what is that? Since the fingerprint was well hidden, this was the first time that Wang Yicheng had seen it. Dried red paint. I've studied painting before, and I'm familiar with this scent. Chen Gu turned to look at the other students inside the room. This should be someone's idea of a prank. He did not continue on this topic, but took out Lin Cici's phone to look under the bed. Similar to the room on the eastern campus, there was something written under the bed. It was a small handwriting, probably carved with a small knife. Why won't anyone talk to me? Why do they ignore me? I'm not lying to them. There really is a ghost. I truly saw a ghost inside the toilet. This place is very dangerous. Why won't anyone believe me? Chen Gu read those words and thought that they feel very familiar. He read further and saw an even more familiar name. I, Lin Cici, swear on my life that the toilet is really haunted. It's real, they've been spying on me. I know everyone hates me and wants to pull pranks on me. I don't mind that. I understand. But the toilet is really haunted. I'm not lying this time. Each of the words was carved deeply, and some places were even stained with blood. The person had probably cut their finger accidentally when carving the words. Were these left behind by Lin Cici? But this is different from the description left in the ghost school's diary. Chen Gu promptly noticed the problem. The diary said that Lin Cici was a very naughty prankster, and in the end, the other students could not stand him anymore and all ganged up to trick him to the toilet. They pranked him together, but accidentally scared him to death. However, the words under the bed told a different story. Lin Cici was not pranked to death by his classmates, he really saw something inside the toilet. Chen Ji's eyes narrowed. He did not know what to believe. The owner of bed 4 was Lin Cici, that was undeniable. Be it the eastern campus or western campus, that was the case. If this bedroom is a replica of everything in someone's memory, then the words underneath the bed should be real. If Lin Cici was scared to his death, how did he come back to carve these words? At this point, Chen Gu was suddenly struck by a thought. He looked at everyone else in the room. In this room, only bed 4 was unoccupied, just like back then. Lin Cis was scared to death and so bed 4 became unoccupied but it also meant there were five other students remaining in room 413. 
Lin Cici knew that the toilet was really haunted, so after he died, he came back to warn the rest, but no one heeded his warning. No wonder he carved these words. Of course, the living wouldn't see it, because he is now a ghost. Chin Gu had no idea whether or not the five in the bedroom were the same five that shared the bedroom with Lin Cici, but if they were not, then their luck could not have been worse. On the eastern campus, every living person that joined the school would be called Lin Cici. This name represented bad luck and a curse, and they would be targeted by all the specters. However, from another perspective, the specters needed a scapegoat to graduate. So, from their angle, Lin Cis, this name represented hope. This is getting more and more interesting. The curse for a living human is the only hope in the specter's eyes. Just what did Lin Cici do at this school to earn a dual identity like that? Chin Gu could confirm that Lin Cis was heavily related to this school. Even if he was not the owner, he had to be related to the owner somehow. If only I could find Lin Cici, or the previous Lin Cici. As Chin Gu continued to look, the handwriting on the bed increased in intensity like the carver was being pushed further and further into despair. I really see the ghost. Can you people trust me just once? Hear my voice, I am here. I am right here. Fine, I don't expect any of you to give me any trust anymore. I only pray that none of you go to the toilet on the top floor of the education block. Remember. Do not go there no matter what. It's over now. They still escaped. The message under the bed stopped there. Chen Gu could feel the person's despair from the carved words. The toilet at the top of the education block? That is where Lin Cici's story ends? Chen Gu stood where he was quietly as his brain spun. The school of the afterlife was the largest, most complicated, and most difficult mission that he had attempted. The clues and questions that he had found were all tangled together, forming a thick fog that blocked his way. To clear them once and for all was an impossible task, Chin Gu could only dead-angle it little by little. A door would not just appear for no reason, there has to be a door pusher. Assuming that person is Lin Cici, the door that he pushed open is most likely in the toilet on the top floor of the education block. Chapter 808 Black Leather Shoes Chin Ji's Eyes Glowed From Finding a Crucial Clue the School of the Afterlife is a four-star mission, one I haven't encountered before, so all the previous experience I've gained is useless here. To learn more, I will have to go and investigate myself. Chin Gu wondered just how intense one's hatred must be to be able to create such a large living nightmare, this was beyond the scale, for even the combined power of both Dr. Gao and Zhang Ya. Perhaps there is a door in the toilet, and when the students were pranking Lin Cici, they accidentally opened the door. Chen Ji's own haunted house had a door. Until now, he had not dared to get any closer, so he predicted Lin Cici might have been caught in the same situation. But while he had managed to avoid the door, Lin Cici had opened the door. No matter what the truth is, I have to go take a look at the toilet on the top floor of the education block. The words did not specify whether the toilet was in the education block situated on the eastern campus or western campus. For the sake of being thorough, Chin Gu decided to check both places. Let's leave for now. I need you all to follow me to the lab building. Chin Gu had gathered enough information from underneath the bed. Staying in room 413 served no more purpose. In fact, it might only arouse the other students and staff's suspicion the lab building? But haven't we just? Wang Yicheng wanted to say something but was interrupted by Zhang Ju, who pulled on Wang Yicheng's shirt sleeves lightly. Just listen to the teacher. We'll go wherever he wants. Going to the lab was a smokescreen dropped by Chen Gu. The students in room 413 had a negative attitude toward them, so once they left the room, Chen Gu would not put it past them to go and report Chen Ji's group to the staff. It's about time for lights out. We'll hurry back after getting the stuff we need. Chen Gu rearranged the bed and led the few club members out of room 413. Along the way, they avoided arousing any other people's attention. 
After they left the male dormitory, Chin Gu saw many people hurrying toward the lab building like something serious had occurred. Zhu Long merely knocked the operating table over, that can be handled by the staff on duty. So, why are there so many people involved? Chin Gu was very curious about the activity at the lab building, but he quickly stifled his curiosity. If he went there, it would be like walking into a trap, so the best choice was to avoid them for now. Sir, are we really going to the lab building? We just came from over there. No, we're going to education block one. We need to move quickly, we need to finish the investigation before we tip off the school. Chen Gu kept changing their movement. This way, it would ensure that if someone was on their tail, they would be puzzled and confused. The group ran in the direction opposite of the lab. As time passed, the campus was getting more and more deserted. Have any of you heard of a toilet-related ghost story? Chinga asked, while they moved. Have any of you been to the toilet on the top floor of the education block? No. The few students shook their heads. This school looks normal on the surface, but dangerous threats are hidden everywhere. When we get there, be sure to listen to my orders. Chinga took them on a detour around the campus to reach the education block. The education block was very imposing. There were three buildings in total, and they were all four stories tall. The school apparently likes the number four a lot. At this time, the education block was devoid of students. The classrooms were shrouded in darkness, and only the corridors had the lights on. This is my first time coming here so late in the day. I didn't notice it in the morning, but this place is quite scary at night. Wang Yicheng walked the slowest. Once they got close to the education block, his expression turned unnatural, like his body had a natural reluctance to come here. This change in the young man attracted Chin Ji's attention. This limping boy had possibly experienced something here in the past. Follow me closely. We are heading directly to the top floor. No matter what you see in the classrooms, do not go toward them. Chin Gu scanned the surroundings before entering the place. Each building had two staircases leading up and down, and the toilet was adjacent to the left staircase. Are we really going there? Zhou Tu had trouble getting into Chin Ji's headspace. The latter's actions felt like there was a detailed plan behind it, but once Zhou Tu gave them a closer look, he realized that they were all without rhyme and reason. However, the man put on such a confident front that Zhou Tu wanted to crack Chin Ji's head open to see the master plan that was brewing inside for himself. Try to keep up, Zhang Ju reminded Zhou Tu kindly as he supported Wang Yicheng. Come on, this is a club activity. Zhu Long's eyes were bloodshot. Even though he was 1.8 meters tall, it did not feel out of place for him to carry a pink phone. I must have lost my mind to follow along this madness. Coming to the toilet to search for supernatural activity at night. Zhou Tu walked into the corridor unwillingly. The group did not stop as they headed to the top floor. The education block was quiet at night, it was a direct contrast to when it was daytime. Me and Zhang Zhu will go in first. Zhu Long will be our direct backup. Zhou Tu and Wang Yicheng, the two of you guard outside. Chen Gu grabbed the handle of the toilet door. He was about to push when someone grabbed his elbow. Sir, can we not go in? Wang Yicheng was standing next to Chen Gu. His face was as white as sheet. Cold sweat slid down his face as his pupils darted about. I just remembered something bad, and it happened right here. What is it? This was the first time that Chen Gu had seen such an expression on Wang Yicheng's face. I could only remember snippets of it. It was something that I was forced to participate in. In the end, only I didn't enter the toilet, so I was the only survivor. The rest who entered the toilet, all of them have died. Wang Yicheng started to ramble on the verge of tears. Those who entered this toilet all died? Chen Gu pressed on Wang Yicheng's hand lightly. You're just a new student here. How would you know something like that? I don't know. I didn't mean to do it. They were the one who forced me. 
Sir, we must leave now. Please do not open that door no matter what. Wang Yicheng was in a pitiable state. I'm not going to give up now that we've reached this place. Chinga let go of Wang Yicheng's hand and pushed the toilet door open. No. Do not open that door. With Wang Yicheng screaming, Chinga opened the toilet door and peered into the room. Plastic Halloween ghost masks littered the ground, and skulls and red handprints were left on the walls using paint. Entering the room would give one a feeling of being watched from all angles. So, this is how they pranked Lin Cici. Chen Ge picked up one of the masks. After making sure that it was not dangerous, he placed it inside his bag. He slowly walked further into the room. When he passed the first cubicle, he took out Lin Cici's phone to snap several pictures. Everything was normal inside the toilet, there was nothing there that did not belong. Everything looks normal, but I keep have this feeling that something's not right. Chen Ge looked at the closed cubicle door. He reached out to push on it and realized that it would not budge. Is someone in there? Chen Ge bent down to look through the bottom gap and saw a pair of black leather shoes sitting inside the cubicle. Chapter 809, Roommates, There's Someone Inside the Cubicle When he saw the black leather shoes, Chen Gu was instantly reminded of Mr. Bai from the Eastern Campus. The latter was wearing a pair of leather shoes, just like that. Stay back. Chen Gu took two steps back. He took out Lin Cici's phone, lowered it to the gap, and snapped a quick picture. Lowering his head to look at the phone, the thing that Chen Gu worried about did not happen. There was only a pair of shoes inside the cubicle, there was no one wearing the shoes. Lin Cici's phone can capture the image of ghosts and other unique entities. Since there is nothing on the picture, this can only mean that the shoes are the only thing inside the cubicle. But if the cubicle is unoccupied, why is the door locked from inside? The cubicle door could only be locked from the inside, and the way the black leather shoes were placed indicated that someone was standing inside and not that someone had shoved them inside through the gap. Teacher, perhaps you were mistaken. Who would come to the toilet alone at an hour like this? Just the thought of it is scaring me. The memory of Zhu Long was loosening. He was reminded of something, but it was still blurry, he could not make it out clearly. However, the influence on the young man was undeniable. Some barely discernible changes were happening to him like he started to maintain his distance from the other club members and would involuntarily stick close to Chen Gu like he believed that he was closer in nature to Chen Gu. Guard the way here. Inform me if anyone's coming. Chen Gu shook the door with brute force, trying to force it open. Many skull faces were painted inside the cramped cubicle. Standing inside would make one feel like one was being stared at by many people. Why would there be a pair of leather shoes here? Chen Gu did not notice any strangeness inside the first cubicle. He came to the second cubicle. With his previous experience, he took out the phone and snapped a picture through the gap. The picture showed that there was also a pair of shoes placed inside the second cubicle. However, this time, it was not a pair of black leather shoes, but a pair of old blue running shoes. The placement is the same. Is there a purpose to this? Chen Gu looked through the first six cubicles. There was a pair of shoes placed inside every cubicle. They were all male shoes, sneakers, hiking boots, and flats of varying sizes. They appeared to belong to different people. The black leather shoes in the first cubicle reminded me of Mr. Bai, they should be for an adult. The other five pairs are mostly for students. Does this mean that each pair of shoes represents one specific individual? Lin Cici was pranked by his whole class. Could these six shoes represent the people who had the biggest grudge against him? The difference between a specter and living person was that they were built by negative emotions and hatred, understanding and kindness were not part of their makeup. No matter what Lin Cici was like in real life, the moment he turned into a specter, his heart would be consumed by hatred. That was the nature of specters and spirit, it was the basis to support his survival. To trap those who had pranked him inside the cubicle to be his company, based on Chen Ji's understanding of specters, that was something one would have done. Sir. 
Someone is coming to the education block. Zhou Tu held Wang Yicheng and screamed at Chen Gu from the entrance. They seem to be coming from the labs. They're chasing after us? Chen Gu moved quickly to the last cubicle. He subconsciously took out the phone to take a picture, but he realized with a shock that the door of the seventh cubicle had been taken off its hinges. Where is the door? Based on Chen Ji's prediction, the door most related to Lin Cici would most likely appear in the toilet, but he could not find it after searching the whole toilet. Calm down, don't panic. Chen Gu bit on his tongue lightly. He knew that the people would need some time to get up the stairs. Each door corresponds to a door pusher, so in other words, the door is the only. His fingers touched the hinges, and Chen Gu realized how the hinges had been broken. The door was forced open from inside. He lowered his head to look at the interior of the cubicle. There were no shoes inside the seventh cubicle, only two bloody footprints. The footprints were placed one before the other like someone was walking out from the door. If each shoe represents one person, does this mean that the person inside the last cubicle has escaped? Chen Gu whipped his head around. Perhaps it was his imagination, but the skulls on the walls seemed to have come alive, their expressions had shifted. The despair and negative emotions on the western campus have all been moved to the eastern campus, so the real blood door should be in the toilet at the top floor of the eastern campus education block. Before solving this problem, another had appeared. The veins on Chen Ji's forehead were close to bursting. He bit on his tongue to make himself more alert. Take this step by step. At least I know that I'm getting closer to the truth. Sir. They're coming up the stairs. We'd better find a place to hide. Zhou Tu was rushing through his words. He was weirdly panicking. It doesn't seem like it was students or teachers who entered the block. They are walking with such strange gait. They're walking strangely? Chen Gu instantly realized that something was off. He waved for Zhang Ju and Zhu Long to get out of the toilet. Which set of stairs are they taking? The one closer to the toilet. Okay. We'll run down the other stairs. Remember, do not let yourself be discovered by them. Chen Gu did not plan to go against the enemy for now. They ran down the corridor, but when Chen Gu passed Wang Yicheng, he suddenly stopped. His gaze narrowed as they fell on Wang Yicheng's shoes. Blue running shoes? Wang Yicheng was wearing the same kind of shoes as the ones found inside the second cubicle. The shoes in the cubicles are all male shoes. Chen Gu thought back to the discovery, and he suddenly realized that the shoes in the toilet matched the shoes worn by the students inside room 413 perfectly. Room 413 has six students, but the toilet has seven cubicles. The six students should correspond to the six cubicles, and the last cubicle with the black leather shoes should represent the teacher, that is seven people in total. Chen Gu frowned. Why would Lin Cici hate his own roommates so much? Didn't he purposely return to his bedroom to warn his roommates against going to this toilet? Chen Gu rubbed his temples. There were too many questions to answer. The eastern campus is unregulated while western campus is like a memory capsule where time is frozen within these several days of the new student's welcoming ceremony. To get to the truth, I'll have to compare the two campuses more closely. The western campus is too perfect, so perfect that it feels unreal, like a child's dream. In comparison, the eastern campus is more realistic. Chen Ji's eyes moved away from Wang Yicheng's shoes. He had already decided to take everyone to the eastern campus. Now I have no other choice. I can only continue to search for the memory in the dream and find the truth in the reality. Chapter 810, They Forced Me To The people that came from the lab had already entered the corridor. They seemed to have a specific goal in mind because they headed directly to the top floor without stopping at all. Quick. Chen Gu carried Wang Yicheng on his back as the group rushed down the corridor to the other end. They hid inside the staircase, holding their breath. Sir, why are we stopping? Keep an eye on the third floor, I'll keep watching the fourth floor's corridor. 
After they've all got up to the fourth floor, we'll start going down. Chen Gu was employing a very risky plan. He stood at the end of the corridor and looked down the long stretch using his yin yang vision. But. Just do as I say. Chen Gu stayed at the mouth of the fourth floor staircase alone, looking down the left side of the corridor. After about ten seconds, he could clearly hear footsteps echoing down the other end. Then, a few people in white outfits appeared on the fourth floor. Why are they dressed so strangely? The whole outfit including the shoes are white. Three people showed up in the corridor in total. Other than the white outfits, there was something else strange about them, their faces were all covered in scars. Not just one or two scars, but like Zhang Zhu, a large portion of their faces were scorched. Are they the school's admin staff? Chen Gu watched them enter the toilet and led the other students to run downstairs, perfectly avoiding their pursuers. Sir, where are we going next? We'll find a chance to go the eastern campus? Chen Gu said in a hurry. The people in the white clothes gave him plenty of pressure. No, but why are we acting so nervously? You're making it look like we're doing something illicit. Zhou Tu looked at Chen Gu and the other members who were acting nervously, and he was rather speechless. We're students here, and Mr. Bai is a member of staff. Even if we are discovered, I'm sure we can explain our way out of it. At most, we'll just compensate them for the broken operating table in the autopsy room. I doubt it'll cost that much. Do you really think that's all the punishment we'll receive once we're captured? Chen Gu stared into Zhou Tu's eyes. The latter moved his head away, afraid to meet Chen Ji's gaze. You'll understand everything once we reach the eastern campus. Chen Gu led the students away from the education block. Using the isolated path, they slowly found their way to the sports equipment room, close to the education block. Sir, aren't we going to the eastern campus? Why are we here? To find some tools. Wang Yicheng, Zhou Tu, the two of you will be on the lookout. The rest of you, come in here with me. Look for things like ropes, and bring all of them with you. Chen Gu pried open the room's door and located some skipping ropes. Sir, those people seem to be heading our way. Zhou Tu's voice came from outside the door. He saw several white shadows rush out from the education block, heading their way. Huh? How do they know we're here? It's not surprising for them to go to the toilet at the top floor of the education block, but how did they know for sure we're in the sports equipment room? A bad feeling rose within Chen Gu. He pulled on the bag zipper, but it couldn't close because it was too full, so he had to carry some of the things in his arms. The sport equipment room is very big, it'll take them some time to search through it. We'll retreat now. Chen Gu carried the bag with one hand and waved at Wang Yicheng. Come, I'll carry you on my back. Chen Gu was offering that out of kindness, but he was rejected by Wang Yicheng. The latter shook his head, his eyes bulging with fear like a child trapped in a nightmare. Sir, I'm very afraid. I hear someone calling my name. Those people are here for me. I can hear their voices. You can hear someone calling your name? When did that start? Chen Gu did not give Wang Yicheng the chance to resist. They were pushed for time, so he forcibly pulled Wang Yicheng onto his back. We'll talk while we move. Sir, those people are here for me. If you bring me with you, you'll only get dragged into it. Wang Yicheng's face was twitching as his body shook. Stop this nonsense, you're my student. Just answer my question. Chen Gu quickened his steps, but he was curious about what Wang Yicheng had said. When you guys brought me to the education block's top floor, a bad feeling overwhelmed me. I felt like crying for some reason. The corridor felt too familiar, like something bad had happened there before. Wang Yicheng's eyes were puffy and red like a hooked fish. He had trouble breathing. Aren't you a new student? How could that corridor be familiar to you? I have no idea. Sometimes, when we go to a new place, it feels like we've been there before. That is what I'm feeling now. Wang Yicheng's answer came intermittently. His face was frighteningly white. 
What about the voices? Did they appear suddenly? What are they telling you? Chen Ge asked softly. When I saw the corridor, I started to feel uncomfortable. When I reached the door, an image flashed through my mind. Wang Yicheng took in a deep breath and continued after a long pause. It feels as if I'd been to that toilet a long time ago. I was tasked with leading someone important into the toilet. His thin body was standing inside the toilet, and the toilet was filled with various monsters. It was because of that short memory that I tried to stop you entering the toilet. Wait a minute. Chin Gug very astutely noticed a detail in Wang Yicheng's words. You were tasked with leading a very important people into the toilet? Yes, that person, if I remember correctly, should be my best friend. I know that because there are not many who are willing to be my friend, he was the only exception. Wang Yicheng bashed on his head heavily. His memory was starting to loosen as well. When we reached the toilet door, his voice appeared in my head. He was calling my name. I'm sure it's him. But I cannot recall who he is. Is his name Lin Cici? When Chin Ge said the name Lin Cici, Wang Yicheng's body started to shake uncontrollably. His arms that grabbed Chin Ji's neck started to increase in strength, crushing Chin Ji's windpipe. I didn't mean to do it, they forced me to. I'm so sorry. We're still best friends. Wang Yicheng screamed with his eyes closed. His wail was harrowing like he had just woken up and seen a ghost standing above him. Calm down. Wang Yicheng's sudden breakdown surprised everyone. This would only put more targets on their back. Chin Gu decidedly dropped the young man from his shoulders and gave him a powerful chop to the back of this neck. Mr. Bai? The other students were shocked. Shut up. I'm trying to save him. Chin Gu attempted a few times before finally knocking Wang Yicheng out. Prolonged hallucinations will cause serious damage to his brain. The best temporary solution that I could think of is to make him stop thinking for now. Chapter 811 The Other Side of the Wall Looking at the Unconscious Wang Yicheng Chin Gu's emotions did not recover for a long time, he had just obtained a very important piece of information from what Wang Yicheng had said. The person who lured Lin Cici into the toilet was none other than Wang Yicheng. Who would have thought the most crucial person has been at my side all along? Chin Gu was thankful that he had not lost his kind nature after entering the door. When he first approached Wang Yicheng, he did not think too much of it. He merely wanted to help after seeing how helpless the young man was. Honestly, he had done what he had set out to do, Wang Yicheng now had a few more new friends, and these new friends would not look down on or bully him. Through what Wang Yicheng said, Chin Ge had a brief grasp of what had happened. Wang Yicheng and Lin Cici both shared room 413. For various reasons, they were both ostracized. However, they took the segregation differently due to the difference in personality. Wang Yicheng chose to suffer the ostracization silently, whereas Lin Sis came up with ideas to get people's attention. Technically, the two could not be considered friends, but bullying victims who found each other. The students hated Lin Cici a lot and decided to disguise as ghosts to scare him in the toilet on the top floor of the education block to take revenge on him. To lure Lin Cici there, they enlisted the help of Wang Yicheng, who could be said to share a good relationship with Lin Cici. Chen Gu had no idea how those people managed to persuade Wang Yicheng, but he knew that, in the end, Wang Yicheng promised to do their bidding. Wang Yicheng was not entirely guilty, but he was the hand that pushed Lin Cici over the abyss. Quick! Before Wang Yicheng wakes up, we need to get away from those people behind us. Chen Gu was very careful. He went to several places and only sighed in relief when he did not see white-clothed people following them. The atmosphere on the western campus was slowly becoming abnormal. There were more and more people in white milling about. Chen Gu was not going to stay any longer, so he led his club members to the trash collection center. Mr. Bai, are those people in white school teachers as well? How come I've not seen them before? Why are they chasing us? Zhu Long had many questions. 
They are not teachers, but admin staff who are tasked with maintaining order on the Western campus. Regarding why they're chasing us, Chen Gook placed the fainted Wang Yicheng on the ground. It is because of him and the rest of you. Us? Yes, this school is not as simple as you might think. If you compare it to a human brain, the Western campus is where they deal with various positive emotions, while the Eastern campus is responsible for the negative emotions and trash. Chen Gu used a normal analogy to explain the situation. The Western campus only has good memories, and all the trash has to be transported to the Eastern campus. But how can people only have good memories in their lives? So, we have forgotten many of our memories? Zhang Ju was very clever. Before Chen Gu finished, he already grasped the point. Yes, your forgotten memories are filled with despair, and those things are treated at trash by the Western campus. Once those memories loosen or awaken, you will be sent to the Eastern campus, Chen Gu told them with a serious tone. Now that you know the truth, do you still wish to continue searching for your memory? I do, Zhu Long promised without hesitation. This inability to remember what I've done is very jarring. If this continues, I'll go insane. Even if the memory is bad, I wish to remember everything. I also wish to know what kind of memory I've lost. Without it, it feels like I am incomplete, like I'm some kind of monster. Zhang Ju's hand brushed against the scar on his face. His eyes were filled with complicated emotions. It was hard to tell what he was thinking. You've all lost your minds. Crazy. Zhou Tu kept mumbling. He was like a trapped rabbit, bouncing where he was. Since you didn't say no, I'll take that as a yes. Chen Gu picked up Wang Yicheng from the ground. Actually, there is one more advantage in us going to the eastern campus now. The people who are on our tail wish to send us to the eastern campus, but they will never expect us to go to the eastern campus on our own. Is there a difference? If we go over there willingly, we can still retain our human selves. If we're sent there, I'm afraid you'll forget even more things. Chen Gu gave the members a few words of consolation. The eastern campus is not as scary as you imagine. As long as we're careful, we'll be fine. Carrying Wang Yicheng, Chen Gu opened the door of the western campus trash collection center. The place was very clean, unlike the one on the eastern campus side. Do not touch anything in here and stay away from those doors. Chen Gu did not know whether the Western Trash Collection Center was manned or not. Before going in, he gave the students some ropes. There is a little window on the second floor. Later, I'll come out from the window to get up the wall. Watch how I do it and just follow my lead. What about Wang Yicheng? Tie him up with the rope. Once I get on the wall, you guys work together to move him through the window, and I'll help pull him onto the wall. Wang Yicheng was short and thin, he was not that heavy. This was good news for Chen Gu. Be careful of your safety. Once you get on the second floor, do not linger, and follow my direction. After he gave them the ropes, Chen Gu personally tied Wang Yicheng and tied the other end of the rope to himself before carrying him to the second floor. After ensuring that there was no one on the second floor, Chen Gu did not dawdle and headed for the window. Opening the small window, Chen Gu very expertly stepped on the windowsill and jumped over to the top of the wall. What are you guys waiting for? Quickly pass Wang Yicheng over to me. The rope was tied to his body on one end and the other end was attached to Wang Yicheng. Mr. Bai, do you teach sports? Zhang Ju was the first to snap out of it. He raised Wang Yicheng out of the window. This is the second floor. Before careful. Zhu Long and Zhou Tu moved forward to help. The three worked together to move Wang Yicheng out. After a long time, Chen Ge finally got Wang Yicheng onto the wall. He was one of the key characters that night, so Chen Gu could not leave him behind. Sitting on the wall again, Chen Ji's feelings were completely different from before. He untied the rope on his body and leaned on the wall, starting to move slowly to make some space for the other students. Quick! Move faster! 
Chen Go held Wang Yicheng and found some gaps amid the bricks and tied the rope through them. Next time, if they wanted to cross between the two campuses, they would not need to go through the trash collection center, they could use this rope that he had left behind. The group used about 10 minutes to cross over to the eastern campus. For those students from the western campus, the eastern campus was a completely unfamiliar place. Chapter 812, Zhang Zhu's memory being chased by teachers and running over walls to escape, that is definitely not how I imagined I would spend my second day at university. Zhou Tu patted the dirt off his body and undid the rope around his waist. Later, more things that you can't imagine will appear. Chen Gu tugged on the rope that he had left on the wall harshly a few times before hiding it. From how he positioned it, even if someone walked past, they would not notice it right away. This rope shall be our escape. When Chen Gu left the eastern campus, he had been alone, but when he returned, he was responsible for a whole club. Sir, did you notice something strange? Zhang Ju stood upright, and the eye that was hidden behind his scar slowly widened. What's wrong? Perhaps it's just me being sensitive, but it feels like the air here is much slicker and wetter, and there is a strange smell in the air like a perfume of blood. Zhang Ju said those strange words in the calmest voice. His lips slowly opened to lick at the scar on his upper lip. There was confusion and loss in his eyes. Compared to the western campus, this place feels much more familiar. You have to be joking, or are you telling me you're familiar with the scent of blood? Zhou Tu had originally thought that Zhang Ju was just disfigured, that his mind was normal, but after hearing what he had just said, Zhou Tu gained a new understanding of Zhang Ju. I'm not joking, it's real. Zhang Ju turned to Chen Ge, who stood where he was with a smile. You are not wrong, this is the soil where sweet dreams are grown. In the world behind the door, only dead bodies and blood can be used as fertilizer to grow the most beautiful flowers. Chen Ge picked up Wang Yicheng and signaled for Zhang Ju to follow behind him. I'll take you to this one place first. Be careful, do not make too much noise. As they walked through the unkempt brush, the night became their best disguise. Along the way, they did not get into any accidents. Chen Ge took Zhang Ju to where he encountered the ghost in the tree hole. Does this place look familiar to you? Chen Gu pointed at the tree hole where the female skull had originally been hidden and the trees around it. It feels like we've been here before. Right, isn't this the crime scene where the girl was killed? We've been to this place on the western campus. How come there is an identical location on the eastern campus? Zhou Tu's eyes widened. Even the tree hole's location and the opening's angle were completely identical. The crime scene on the western campus is only an empty shell, the dead body and the dead spirit were hidden on the eastern campus. This place is the real crime scene. When Chen Gu explained it, Zhang Ju appeared to be attracted by something. He stood beside the tree hole alone, his shoulders slightly shaking. Zhang Ju? He did not appear to have heard Chen Gu. The young man slowly squatted down beside the tree hole and reached his shaking hands into the hole. Hey, are you mad? The girl's skull was found inside the tree hole. Why are you reaching into it? Zhou Tu wanted to go forth to frag Zhang Ju back, but was stopped by Chen Gu. Do not disturb him. His memory is buried inside that tree hole, he has to dig out the thing that he has lost himself. Dig it out? You people are crazy. Zhou Tu was not as powerful as Chen Ge, and he could not struggle loose. He could only stand there and watch. With both of his knees on the ground, Zhang Ju knelt next to the tree hole as his gaze stared directly into the dark enclosure. His arms gradually moved into the hole. His body kept shaking, and sweat slid down his face like tears. Why isn't it here? Why? Why it's not here? Impossible. Zhang Ju could not find anything. He grumbled intermittently like he was so nervous that his breasts were breaking. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw him bury the thing inside the tree hole. Why isn't it here? 
His fingers pulled on the tree roots and dirt until his fingernails started to drip with blood, but Jean Ju did not seem to feel the pain. With a deranged fervor, he continued his digging. Zhang Ju, are you looking for this? Chen Go pulled out a rusty blade from his bag. This blade was the female specter's item of possession. Chen Gu had discovered it buried inside the tree hole after she was consumed by the shadow. Initially, Chen Gu had taken it as an item of defense, he did not think that it would have such a use. The surroundings suddenly silenced as everyone moved their gaze to the blade. This blade was found inside the tea hole. The dead's maddened spirit was lingering on this blade. Chen Gu placed the blade before Zhang Ju. Take it, and see if it can help you remember your past. Zhang Ju was at this breaking point. His arms shook harder, and his pupils were darting everywhere. It is very familiar, isn't it? Have you seen this blade somewhere before? Who was holding this blade, and what was the man doing with it? Chen Gu was like a needle piercing into Zhang Ju's mind. His trembling fingers reached toward the blade. When his fingertips touched the handle, his face suddenly changed, his pupils narrowed, and his mouth opened wide with a voiceless scream. Before the scream could escape, Chen Gu rushed forward to clamp his hand over Zhang Ju's mouth. It's all right. All that is in the past. It's already over. Even though he was comforting Zhang Ju, Chen Gu kept his eyes on the blade in Zhang Ju's hand. Once the young man attempted to attack with the blade, he would knock him over. Zhang Ju was far more powerful than Chen Gu had anticipated. As the memory returned, his strength kept growing. This child did not seem to be a normal spirit. Just as Chen Gu was about to lose control of Zhang Ju, the latter started to calm down. Chen Gu let go of the young man, and Zhang Ju collapsed to the ground. His lips were kissing the ground, and the scar on the face appeared to become more intense. I. I think I just remembered something. Zhang Ju stared at his cracked nails. That day, it was Senior's birthday. A girl wanted to confess to him, but Senior already had a girlfriend, so he asked me to go and reject her. I came to the promised spot, but I didn't see the girl, so I kept waiting. Then I heard something moving in the forest, so I ran over quietly, and I saw someone use this knife. The girl was still struggling, but I didn't dare show myself, I was stunned. I'd never seen so much blood in my life. His nails dug into the ground, and the scars on Zhang Ju's face were squeezed together. If I'd stood up then, perhaps the girl wouldn't have died. Blame and guilt tormented Zhang Ju. He gripped the knife tightly. When I returned to call the police, the group of people had already escaped, I have no idea whether they were captured or not. However, I remember thinking that one of them looked very familiar. The following night, we drank a lot and then went to the karaoke. That was when the fire happened. I was sent to the hospital and then. Zhang Ju whacked his own head multiple times. What happened next? Why can't I remember anything? After you were taken to the hospital from the fire, that is where your memory stopped. Chen Gu now knew about Zhang Ju's past. Chapter 813, Portrait of the Doctors I could see the embers burning and the fire getting closer. Along with the rolling flames, I could hear the screams and wailing. I couldn't open my eyes due to the fire. I wanted to run outside, but once the door was opened, fire burst into the room. Zhang Ju lay on the ground, and veins covered his forehead. The scars on his face were slightly shaking. It was hard to tell where the pain was coming from. I tried my best to run outside. The air was getting thin, I couldn't see anything, and in the end, I fainted in the corridor. Fuzzily, I remember someone carrying me out. At that time, I still had some lingering consciousness left. Fingers dirted with blood and dirt reached through the air. Zhang Ju used his elbows to support his body. I should have been sent to the hospital directly. I think I can remember hearing the conversation between my parents the doctors. I wanted to open my eyes, but when I did, it was a completely dark world that I saw like everything within my sight was charred. Zhang Ju's voice was slowly returning to normal even though he was still collapsed on the ground. 
I can remember my parents' faces, and I can remember the doctors and nurses that look after me, but I cannot for the life of me remember when I woke up from the fainting, and I cannot remember how I came to this school. Is there a chance that actually you haven't woken up from your coma and that you're dreaming up this world? Chen Ji's question surprised Zhang Ju. I still haven't woken up? This is a dream that I've dreamed up? Zhang Ju repeated what Chen Gu had said. Then everything here is part of my dream? Even you are just part of my imagination? Imagination your head. That's preposterous. Can you please act normal? Zhou Tu took the blade away from Zhang Ju. I don't know about the others, but I am definitely not a part of your imagination. I'll hold on to the blade for you in case you decided to test that theory out on us. Zhou Tu felt like he was the only normal member of this club, and thus, it was safest for him to have the blade for safekeeping. Zhang Ju is not wrong, but there is a detail that he is mistaken about. This world is not his own dream, but a collection of many people's negative emotions and despair. It is a nightmare formed from all that. Chen Gu scanned every member's face. All of you are trapped inside this world, and this world was created by all of you as well. When Chen Gu said that, the brush was intensely quiet. Everyone looked at him with various expression. I know you might not be able to accept that for now, but it's okay, we still have time. Chen Gu carried Wang Yicheng and looked at the wall far away. Wang Yicheng's recovery of his memory has attracted the administrators, and now that your memory, Zhang Ju, has started to loosen as well, the admins might come and get us soon. We need to leave as soon as possible. Chen Gu turned around and headed out the brush. Wait. Zhang Ju grabbed the dirt that was reddened by blood and slowly lifted his head. His eyes were zoomed in on Chen Gu. Who are you? Why are you telling us all this? Who I am is not that important, the important thing is that I can help you escape from this place. Your friends and family have waited long enough for you in real life. Chen Gu smiled. Actually, I am not unlike you. I am also missing a part of my childhood memory, so when I encountered you, I seem to have encountered my past self. Chen Gu sighed with emotion. He led the club members away from the lab and the staff dormitory, following the path to the education block. The toilet is on the top floor of the education block, I believe the answer we're looking for is there. The education block on the western campus was only quiet and eerie, but the education block on the eastern campus was filled with danger. By getting close to it, a chill would climb up one's spine. Be as quiet as you can. If anything happens here, the consequences will be very serious, Chingu whispered. What kind of consequences? Zhou Tu's forehead was sweating. He gripped the blade that had been dug out of the tree hole and bent his back. His eyes looked around, and he was very nervous. The eastern campus is used to store the trash from the western campus. Normally, how do we treat trash? Chingu maintained the smile but the words that he said caused the members to suck in a cold breath. After we're captured, we will be stripped of everything that we consider valuable and then abandoned. Here, death is a luxury. There was no taking back a loosened arrow. Chen Gu was the first to head into the education block. Perhaps it was his imagination, but night on the eastern campus felt darker than on the western campus. Stepping on the old staircase, holding the banister that was charred, one could hear the sound of tables and chairs moving from inside the supposedly empty classrooms. This place is so scare. I can't imagine it was just a wall away from us. Zhu Long lowered his voice. He walked at the back of the group. Shush, don't talk. Zhou Tu, holding the knife, stuck close to Zhang Zhu afraid that this student with a scarred face might suddenly act up. The more he worried about it, the more he felt it might happen, so Zhou Tu had been keeping an eye on Zhang Ju. The latter suddenly stopped moving. What's wrong? No, I'm just curious. Why are there so many pictures of doctors on the corridors of the education building? Zhang Ju lifted his head to look at the pictures on the wall. We are not a medical school and these doctors don't appear to be renowned doctors. 
Many of them don't even have an introduction but pictures of them working in white coats. By the way, have any of you noticed that all of these pictures were taken when they were at work? Zhang Zhu's words attracted Qin Ji's attention. Previously, he had thought that these pictures were very strange but could not figure out why. Zhang Zhu's words reminded him of a possibility. The world behind the door is weaved from the door pusher's memory. This school is very unique, it seems to be made up from the memories of all of its students. So, the pictures of the doctors might have been people that the students encountered in real life. Chen Gu patted Zhang Ju's shoulder lightly. Pay attention to these pictures. See if there's anyone you recognize. To be able to be celebrated like this has to be someone at the top of the field. How would I know someone like that? Here, doctors perhaps have a special meaning. Just follow my instructions. Chen Gu led the members up the stairs. When they passed the third floor, he suddenly stopped. Stop, there's someone ahead. The classroom nearest oh the third floor staircase was not locked. The door made from poor quality wood creaked noisily in the wind. Chen Ji's group stood frozen on the spot. After a while, a shadow exited the classroom. That figure looks so familiar. Could it be Changgu? Chapter 814, Do You Dare? The shadow's frame was similar to Changgu's, but it moved very fast, not like someone who was blind. Chen Gu did not dare just announce himself. He wished to observe the figure longer, but the person rushed straight down to the other end of the corridor like it was looking for something. Is that Changgu? Has he recovered his sight? The education block was not lit. Even with his Yinyang vision, Chen Gu was taking careful steps. Sir, is that a friend? Should we go meet up with him? Now is not the time for reunions. We'll go to the top floor first. Chen Gu kept his gaze on the shadow. The person did not leave but went into another classroom. There was another party in the education block that night. Chen Gu did not know whether this change was a good thing or not. The group soon reached the fourth floor. The toilet was at the other end of the corridor. No matter what you hear, do not answer. No matter what you see, do not leave the group. Understand? Chen Gu whispered the warning to the members and then carried Wang Yicheng down the corridor. He bent his body low and used the corner of his eyes to scan the classrooms on both sides. There was only darkness inside the windows, he could not see anything. The members followed behind Chen Gu. They tried not to look beside them, but the more they told themselves not to do that, the more their eyes started to wander. What's that? The classrooms there needed a good tidying up. When Zhou Tu passed one of the windows, there was something that looked like many strands of hair dangling from the window frame. It felt like there was a girl leaning against the window. It's not a real person, right? Zhou Tu stood on his tiptoes as he hurried forward. He titled his head downward and looked from underneath the window. The hair is moving? Before Zhou Tu could get a closer look, his body knocked into something. That came as such a surprise to him that he dropped the knife that he was holding to the ground. The rusted blade clattered noisily on the ground. Inside the dark building, the sound was intensely sharp and loud. Everyone stopped moving and Chen Gu turned to Zhou Tuesday, what are you doing? I accidentally bumped into Zhang Ju. Zhou Tu held his nose and pointed at Zhang Ju, who stood frozen. He noticed that Zhang Ju's expression was rather strange. Why did you suddenly stop when we're moving? Zhang Ju did not reply. He lifted his head to look at the picture on the wall. His lips were slightly open, and his pupils were narrowed to a point. Zhang Ju? No matter how the others nudged him, Zhang Ju had no reply. His gaze was glued to the picture on the wall, and there was a trace of sadness in his eyes. When he saw the blade that had killed the girl in the brush, his mind had completely broken down, but now he was completely different from then. There was no maddened scream and self-mutilation to nullify the psychological pain, he merely stood before the picture quietly. I've seen this doctor before. He spoke so softly that only people directly beside him could hear. 
That fire burned 20% of my skin. I saw my blood and flesh burn. I sniffed the stench that came from my own body until my eyeballs melted off from the flame. My eyelids were glued together, and my world plunged into darkness. I was sent to the hospital. The pain was so intense that I couldn't feel the pain anymore. I couldn't open my eyes, and my nostrils were burnt. One of my ears was partially burnt, and the other was significantly burnt. I became a monster. I could not see myself, but I knew I'd become a monster. I could no longer return to a normal life. Have you ever wondered what it feels like to use partially sealed ears to hear your family? Someone was saving me. I could feel the pain returning. I was getting closer to being saved, but how would I wake up? Something cold cut open my eyes, and they were cleaning it little by little. My left eye was taken out, and I could barely see a grayish world out of my right eye. I could not sense light, I could only see shadows out of my right eye. Tell me, how would I survive like that? Zhang Ju pressed his hand on the picture on the wall. His face was leaking blood. A small tra trail of blood leaked out from his skin like a thread used in a suturing surgery. I know this doctor. He accompanied me for a week. Death had come to claim my life, and he made a bet with him. His voice was getting coarse like it was burnt in a fire. His appearance was changing as well. The blood and scar spread on his face. His ears started to shrivel like a flower, and the skin on his left eye was slowly melting. I never said a word to him, but I remember him very clearly. At the last moment of my life, he was one of three people present. The guilt for the dead unlocked Zhang Ju's memory. The doctor who had once saved him restored his originally blurry memory, and now the pieces were surfacing in his mind. Blood vessels dripped out of his skin like the sutured wounds were reopening. The blood vessels coagulated into blood globules and dropped on Zhang Ju's shirt. His shirt was slowly turning red. If you were in my situation, would you choose to live or to die? A half-red, specter? After they recover their memory, the specters will return to their original form? The girl at the tree hole was unable to retain a normal human form because her memory wasn't fully wiped? Chin Ji's eyes were twitching, but his reaction was already calmer compared to the other members. Zhou Tu was so shocked that he neglected to pick up the blade. He grabbed Zhu Long's elbow, and the two involuntarily retreated three meters away. No one responded. Zhang Zhu's eyes slowly moved away from the doctor's picture to Chen Go. I have remembered who I am. Now, can you tell me who you are? The two stood inside the darkened corridor, looking at each other. You've asked me that question before, and I've given you the answer. Chen Gu stood where he was and did not take a step back. We are the same. I also wish to find the memory, the memory that I've lost. Helping you is helping myself. You're lying. Zhang Ju reached out toward Chen Gu, but as his fingers were about to touch Chen Gu, he stopped. Why did you stop? Chen Gu took one step forward. He leaned close to Zhang Ju's scary, despairing face. Are you afraid that after you kill me, another me will stand up from my dead body? Are you afraid of me, who is wearing red? Gripping Zhang Ju's shoulders, Chen Ji's expression was completely maddened. His hands moved on Zhang Ju's shoulders, before moving slowly to caress Zhang Ju's face and touching the young man's forehead. You want to kill me? Do you dare? Not only Zhang Ju, Zhou Tu, and Zhu Long, who were hiding behind were spooked. The corridor was silent. After a long time, Chen Go let go of Zhang Ju. He looked at the other members inside the corridor. I just want to find my lost memory. If you help me, you're helping yourselves. The opposite is also true. Chapter 815, Movable Door Zhang Ju had long noticed that Chen Gu was not a normal person. The man's eyes could retain calmness no matter the situation, like there was nothing in the world that could shock him. To be honest, he was afraid of people like that, but it was because of that fear that he had chosen to follow and listen to Chen Ji's orders. Standing before the picture, Zhang Ju opened his remaining right eye and stared quietly at Chen Ji's face. 
It was a normal facial feature, a face that would be lost in the crowd, but someone like that subconsciously radiated a presence that frightened even himself. It was hard to describe, it was like a hatred-filled specter was mixed with a crazed madman. He could see madness, sickness, and cruelty from that face but could not find a trace of fear. Zhang Ju knew how he looked, that he looked like a scary monster, but Qin Ji's earlier reaction made him realize that there were scarier monsters than him in the world. Yes, we should be the same type of person. He believed Qin Gu because only those who had experienced hell would make that kind of expression. The man, like him, had also forgotten his past. I'm sorry, Mr. Bai. It's because of this sudden return of bad memory that I lost control of myself. Zhang Ju's voice was harsh and grating, but his attitude became much better. It's no matter. Of course, I do not mind. A teacher has to be understanding of his student, Chinga said with a smile. He gave off warmth and kindness. It was hard to imagine that he was the same person who had confronted Zhang Ju earlier. What have you remembered? There's no need to be shy. Let me everything. Actually, it's nothing, just some painful memory. Zhang Ju's wounds were still opening. His shirt was slowly being dyed red. I remembered the time when I witnessed the murder. I was scared and cowardly. I remembered the pain of having my skin seared by fire. It was like having needles pierce into your skin until you couldn't feel pain anymore. I still remember the pain and helplessness I felt when I was lying in the ICU. Despair grew in my heart. I didn't want to know, but I didn't know how to survive. At the last moment of your life, did any special happen to you or around you? Zhang Ju appeared in this world inside the door, but at the time, he should have lost the ability to push open any door. Chen Gu was curious how he ended up at the school. Only by knowing how he entered would they have a chance of exiting. For a three-star scenario, the door was the only exit, but that did not seem to be case for four-star scenarios. At the last moment of my life, Zhang Ju reached out to touch his face. It seems I fell into a coma, but I could sense the goings-on around me. I cannot tell the difference between the nightmare and reality, but I remember one thing very clearly. Whenever midnight came, there would be a door inside the sick room. A door? I stayed for seven days at the hospital. The door appeared every night, and each night, it showed up closer. Until it stopped right beside my bed. Zhang Ju lifted his bloodied face. It was a moving door. The more afraid I was, the more despair I felt, the closer it would come to me. I couldn't ask for help. At the night of the eighth day, the door was pushed open from inside. Hans reached out from behind the door to pull me into it. What Zhang Ju described was similar to what had happened to Chang Gu. They had both encountered a door that could move. Every night at midnight, this door would get close to the sleeping victim before ending up beside them. The door would be opened from inside to pull the victims in. And this school is behind the door? Chen Gu was curious about what had happened next. He wanted to know how Zhang Ju had lost his memory. Just how did this student whose face had been ruined in a fire become a half-red specter? Zhang Ju shook his head. I felt trapped in a dream, a dream that felt so real. In the dream, everyone referred to me as Lin Cici, even though I told them again and again that my name is Zhang Ju. I said they've got the wrong person but they thought it was just a joke. No one would believe me, and I could only survive in the dream as Lin Cici to experience everything as Lin Cici. Eventually, even I started to wonder if I was really Lin Cici. Being bullied, ostracized, ignored, it was hard to stomach, but I thought about it from another perspective. In real life, I had already become a monster. The life in the dream was not that bad. Zhang Ju's voice was flat enough to feel like he was telling another person's story. I had no friends, and everyone hated me. I started to get dull to both the spiritual and physical torture, but then one day, a girl walked into my dream. It was a cloudy day. Someone planted a frog in my deskmate's school bag. She suspected that I was the culprit, but I wouldn't do something so stupid. 
No one listened to my explanation. The class chased me out, and everyone in the corridor gawked at me with their strange eyes. I ran away from them to go hide on the rooftop of the education block. I met her there. Even though I knew it was a dream, I felt that she was very special. Zhang Ju's voice started to change. Her name was Wen Chanyu, the only person who didn't ignore me. I told her my sorrow, and she showed me sympathy. Then I told her about my past, and she confirmed that I am not Lin Cici. Only when I was with her could I remember myself and not get assimilated into the dream. We would meet every dusk on the rooftop, and gradually, I felt like I couldn't stay away from her anymore. She said that she was very interested in my stories, and I liked spending time with her just as color started to return to my life, she suddenly posed a question to me, would I like to see the world outside of the school? At the time, I had no idea what she meant. I just wanted to stay with her, so I nodded. That day, after midnight, she led me to the library. The library's door was always locked, so we jumped in through the window. We found a mirror behind one of the bookshelves on the third floor. The mirror was very big, and the girl said that the mirror could still be used several times and told me to keep it a secret. I trusted her implicitly. At the same time, I realized something. This was the first time that I had seen a mirror inside my dream. I asked the girl what I should do. The girl told me that I only needed to peer into the mirror. I stood before the mirror, and she moved to stand behind me. In the quiet night, I stared at myself in the mirror. The more I stared, the more I felt the reflection in the mirror changing. Slowly, my reflection started to bleed, and scars appeared on the person's face. His ears started to wilt, his left eye closed, and his face started to get scarred and burned. I did not dare look further, but just as I wanted to leave, the monster in the mirror reached out to grab me. Blood leaked out of the mirror until the surface was completely red. I screamed loudly for help and turned around to look at Chang Wenyu, but she was unmoved. Even now, I can remember what she told me last. Why are you afraid? That is the real you inside the mirror. Her slender fingers pressed on my left eye softly and slowly plucked it out. The world immediately lost its color. I was dragged away by the monster inside the mirror. All the beautiful anticipation turned into the most venomous curse. Chapter 816 Just a speculation after Chang Wenyu took my left eye, I became similar to the monster from inside the mirror. She shattered my hallucination. I was not Lin Cici, but Zhang Ju, the scary looking monster from inside the mirror, was myself. With his wound bleeding, Zhang Ju's shirt was half dyed red, but the scarier thing was that the blood vessels that had started to weave on his shirt still continued to increase in number. Chen Gu had initially thought Zhang Ju was just a half red specter, but he soon discovered that he had greatly underestimated the young man. As his memory was awakened, the blood on Zhang Ju began to intensify as it proceeded to color his whole body red. I was pulled into the mirror and Chang Wenyu, who stood outside the mirror, held my left hand. Her lips opened and closed, and I believe she was saying, one last one left. My left eye started to change in her grasp. The memory of my life flashed in the pupil. When she took my left eye, she also took all of my hope. Drip drop. Zhang Ju's blood dripped on the corridor. Footsteps echoed down the block, but no matter where they looked, there was no one coming. What kind of world is it inside the mirror? Chinga asked softly. Red. There is just red, everything is red. Zhang Ju's description reminded Chin Gu of the scenario behind the door of the three-star trial mission. Then, how did you return from that place? The other me from inside the mirror, he was covered in blood. He wanted to consume me. Before I could give it some thought, my legs carried me away. I ran for a long time before I realized that inside the mirror was another school. It was completely deserted, or at least, it looked that way on the surface. And then? I never even survived the first night. The other me from inside the mirror caught me. A trace of confusion appeared in Zhang Ju's eyes. In my memory, he killed me, but when I reopened my eyes, 
I had returned to this school and lost a major part of my memory, becoming part of the school. In other words, your memory was tampered with after you died? I guess you could say that. I have no idea what happened in between. I believe you'll need to go to the Red World if you really want to find out the answer. Zhang Zhu did not seem to be lying. Even though he looked scary, his expression was sincere. I think I get it, Chinga said softly. Normally, the door is the only way to enter the blood world, but there is a specter far more powerful than we can imagine in this scenario. He could be a greater red specter. This specter uses mirrors as a medium to isolate another world from inside the blood red world. This other world is this school that we're in. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every club member shook their head. I'll give you a simpler example. After pushing open the door, we entered the blood red world. But inside this blood red world, we found a mirror, and when we touched the mirror, we entered the world inside the mirror. If we compare it to dreaming, it should be easier to understand. Normally, once we sleep, our consciousness enters a dream world, but if we start to dream while inside a dream, what happens? We enter a dream inside a dream. Blood Red World is constructed from despair and negative emotions, and the world inside the mirror is more like a dream created by the door pusher. Chingu used an elaborate example to explain the situation to the students. As he did so, a crucial problem that he had was answered. When he woke up, he had lost contact with all of his workers, and the black phone was missing, which placed him in a very dangerous situation. It had been confusing him. How did the owner make that happen? The black phone aside, Zhang Ye was hiding in his shadow, but at that moment, his shadow had become very normal, Zhang Ye was not with him. From this point, it could be understood that it was not his real self that had entered this school. Just like Zhang Zhu had said, when he looked inside the mirror, there was another him. One was kind and gentle, the other cruel and ruthless, the combination of both was the real him. I should have run into the same problem as Zhang Zhu. Part of my persona is trapped inside the mirror, and the other part outside the mirror. This was all Chen Ji's speculation and he was not confident that he was 100% right. It was like he was walking in fog, and the only source of light was himself. Chang Wenyu once used the mirror in the library, so after visiting the toilet, the next stop is the library. Chen Gu voiced his thought. Why do you wish to go there when everyone gives the place a wide berth? Zhang Ju could not understand Chen Gu. His memory had just woken up. Various thoughts swirled in his mind, and his gaze was rather blurry. Compared to this place, I prefer the blood red world because that place is more realistic. Chen Ji's word proved that he was no ordinary person. Zhang Zhu thought about it and agreed. That's perfect. I wish to know what has happened to me as well. Theoretically speaking, I should be dead, right? After getting that response from Zhang Zhu, Chen Gu sighed in relief, because Zhang Zhu would be a welcomed aid. Come, let's head to the toilet first. Chen Ji's group had stayed in the corridor for a long time. Thankfully, nothing strange had happened. Zhu Long, can you see the change happening to Zhang Zhu? His face is so scary now. Zhou Tu did not dare get too close to Chen Gu and Zhang Zhu, he felt like they were both madmen. At this time, I can only trust Mr. Bai. Zhang Zhu's change also proved that he hasn't been lying to us, right? We are on the path to regain the memory that we've lost. Zhu Long did not look so well. He gritted his teeth, and his hand that held the phone was white. If you say so. Zhou Tu turned to glance behind him. He was too afraid to leave on his own. I must have been mad to agree to join a club like this. He summoned the courage to pick up the blade on the ground, but as he did so and his view was inverted, he saw that there was an upside-down human head looking at him from down the corridor. No wait. To be more precise, the upside-down person was looking at Zhang Zhu and Wang Yicheng, who was on Chen Ji's back. Zhou Tu's knees went wobbly from the shock. If not for Zhu Long, he would have collapsed. What's wrong with you? There's someone behind us. 
There are a lot of people who are following behind us. Zhou Tu's voice was shaking. Where? Zhu Long turned to look. They were the only ones on the empty corridor. Are you hallucinating? Chapter 817, Faceless Boy Zhu Long held Zhou Tu, and the two looked behind them. There was only darkness. There was a faint echo of footsteps, but there were no living people to be seen. No one's there. I saw them when I bent down to pick up the blade earlier. They were all following behind us, while moving upside down. It's like they're living in a world that's inverted to ours. Zhou Tu was shocked. Those people kept staring at Zhang Ju and Wang Yicheng. Should we go and tell this to Mr. Bai? That's not a bad idea. Zhu Long looked behind them with confusion. Zhou Tu did not look like he was lying. Just as the two were discussing that, Chen Gu and Zhang Ju reached the middle of the corridor. The closer they got to the toilet, the more nervous they became. Mr. Bai, Zhou Tu saw people trailing behind us. They were all moving upside down. I don't know what to say. In any case, you'd better ask Zhou Tu for the details. Zhu Long dragged Zhou Tu to Chen Gu. When I bent down to pick up the blade earlier, I saw that there was a crowd of people behind us. Their heads were all looking down, and they floated in midair. No, it's more like they're walking on the ceiling. Those people should be attracted by Wang Yicheng and Zhang Ju. Those monsters kept their gazes on Zhang Ju and Wang Yicheng. Zhou Tu did not want to get too close to Zhang Ju, this was a natural reaction. Upside down people? Chen Gu had encountered them at the lab before. We'll go take a look at the toilet first, to see if the door is really there. If we find nothing, we'll leave immediately. This school was too strange. Even with the protection from a red specter, Chen Gu did not feel safe. Moving faster, just as Chen Gu was several steps away from the toilet, a grip suddenly tightened around his neck. A pair of cold, thin arms locked around his neck. The person was slowly tightening his grip, and Chen Ji's breathing became more difficult. Wang Yicheng? You've woken up? Chen Gu turned back to look. Wang Yicheng's head was lolled on his shoulder. His eyes were bloodshot. He seemed to be fighting something in his mind. Do not go in. They're inside. Wang Yicheng's voice was different from how he usually sounded. It was thick with guilt. He sounded like a wounded stray dog, guarding his friend's body while fists and kicks rained down on him. They? Who are they? The other students and seniors. Everyone who hates you is inside. Do not go in. I've already informed the teacher. Wang Yicheng wanted to force a smile, but he could not do it. Have you knocked the sense out of him? What's he mumbling about? Zhu Long held the pink phone and silently moved to Chen Ji's side. This education block was too creepy, and he only felt relatively safer when he was next to Chen Gu. Wang Yicheng, have you remembered something? Wang Yicheng's memory had loosened at the door of the Western Campus Toilet. At the time, Chen Gu had been afraid of being exposed, so he had knocked the boy out. Now, even though he had recovered, there still appeared to be some psychological issue remaining. They had me trick you in to come here, I didn't agree, so they hit me. I was forced to climb the stairs with my limping leg. I heard everything. But they still didn't prepare to let you go. Remember, no matter who tells you to go to the toilet on the top floor of the education block, do not go there. Please do not go there. Wang Yicheng's voice was weak, like he was dying. Other than you, have they asked anyone else to trick Lin Cici into coming here? I don't know, but I have already informed the teacher about this. Why isn't he here yet? Wang Yicheng sounded anxious. His only hope was that teacher, but that teacher did not seem to have shown up. Perhaps that teacher hated Lin Cici as well. It'll be fine. I'm just taking a look. No. Don't go in there. Wang Yicheng treated Chen Gu as Lin Cici. Those were his real thoughts. Guilt ravaged him, and he really wished to atone for his mistake. 
To have Chen Gu give up when they were literally at the door was impossible. Plus, with the aid of Zhang Zhu, this half-red specter who was still strengthening, he was not that worried. Wang Yicheng's arms tightened further until veins popped on them. This child used all of his strength to stop Chen Gu from entering the toilet, probably because he did not want to witness a repeat of the tragedy. The toilet was at the very end of the corridor. There was a thick stench of disinfectant in the air. There were brown stains on the wall tiles and water stains on the ground. Other than that, there were plenty of footprints. They were all different, so they should belong to different people. The toilet door was locked. Chenga took out the tools to unlock it. When he pushed open the wooden door, Chenga took a step back and carefully peered into the room. This toilet looked completely different from the one on the western campus. It was very dirty like it had been forgotten by the school. No one had entered this place, and it had obviously never been cleaned. Has this toilet been locked ever since the Lin CC incident? Chen Gu turned back to ask Wang Yicheng. The child had lost the ability to speak. He was shaking like he was ill. Comparted to the western campus, this toilet felt more real to Chen Gu. He carried Wang Yicheng into it. Once they stepped into the toilet, Wang Yicheng closed his eyes. He did not dare look nor remember. This room gives me a different feeling compared to the other room. Zhang Zhu looked around. Blood vessels climbed on the walls. They were like cracks that covered the whole room. The skull faces on the wall were already blurry like forgotten memories. The dried blood vessels covered all the painting on the walls like they did not wish for them to be seen. Walking to the first cubicle, Chinga took out Lin Cici's phone and snapped a picture through the gap. There were several shadows that appeared on screen. Who's inside? Chinga forced the door open, and what he saw was out of his expectation. There was a mannequin placed inside the first cubicle. He was wearing a pair of black leather shoes. He was about 30 to 40 and looked similar to the Mr. Bai whom Chen Gu had encountered. There was a pair of shoes placed in the western campus toilet, and the first cubicle here contains a real mannequin. What's the reason behind this difference? The mannequin inside the cubicle had his head lowered and his hands behind his head. He stood upright, his posture making him appear like he had made some mistake. Chen Gu could not see any problem with his inyang vision. Lastly, he took out Lin Cici's phone to aim at the first cubicle. The mannequin that looked like Mr. Bai stood inside the cubicle, but the phone captured the image of a faceless boy. His hands were behind his back in the same posture as the mannequin. Could this faceless boy be Lin Cici? Did Mr. Bai once punish him in such a manner, so he's using the same method to punish Mr. Bai? Chapter 818 Would You Be My Friend? Chin Gu yanked open the second cubicle, there was a thin, male mannequin inside. One of his legs was distorted as he curled up inside the cubicle with dirt and trash thrown haphazardly around him. This mannequin bears a resemblance to Wang Yicheng. The mannequin in the cubicle wore the same pair of blue running shoes as Wang Yicheng on Chen Ji's back, so the mannequin should refer to Wang Yicheng. Chin Gu raised the phone at the second cubicle and the picture on screen was heart-wrenching. The faceless child was forced by a group of people into the cubicle, and they tossed various trash on him. The boy inside the picture did not resist and allowed them to bully him. The mannequin in the third cubicle wore a pair of glasses, and his body was covered in red paint. He stood dumbly facing the wall. This mannequin looked similar to the thin, tall boy whom Chin Gu had encountered in room 413. With his previous experience, Chen Gu aimed the phone at the cubicle directly. A faceless boy appeared on screen. He stood inside the cubicle alone, and around him were people who kept pouring paint into the cubicle. His clean clothes were made dirty, and the paint slid down the creases of his shirt and shorts. The boy kept his head lowered, making no sound. These bullies have gained a mob mentality. Chen Gu pushed open the door of the fourth cubicle. The mannequin inside was shirtless. The wet shirt was abandoned next to the toilet. Chenga took out the phone and aimed it inside the cubicle. 
On the screen, the faceless boy slowly removed the shirt dirted with paint while someone dumped a bottle of water on him. Fifth cubicle, sixth cubicle. Each cubicle presented a story that was harrowing. When people were carried away by madness, they had no idea how crazy they were acting, and they would stop at nothing to unload their negative emotions on others. When he opened the first cubicle, Chinga had merely wanted to uncover the truth. He had nothing to do with events that transpired there. He was merely a passing visitor, a victim who wanted to leave. But after he witnessed the events inside the six cubicles, his heart was already changing. His face was drawn. If people who knew him had seen him then, they would have been surprised because he rarely had an expression like that. Facial expressions represented the internal emotion. If it showed on the face, one's internal thoughts could be told, and the weakness would be exposed. Thus, when Chin Guk conducted the Black Phone's mission, he always remained calm. Are these students or demons? Raising his head, Chin Guk looked at the seventh cubicle. This was the only cubicle without a mannequin and also the only cubicle without a door. The door had been taken off the hinges with brute force. The connecting spot still had broken wooden chips. It was hanging by a single hinge. The door was missing, and the inside of the cubicle was crawling with the blood vessel-like things. To be precise, the blood vessels inside the toilet crawled out from inside this cubicle. The seventh cubicle could be said to be the source of everything. Was Lin Sis trapped inside this cubicle? The black-red blood vessels were like wilted veins. They crawled all over the cubicle's walls like they were covering something. Chinga took out Lin Sisi's phone, adjusted the brightness to the maximum, and aimed it at the cubicle. The faceless boy was hugging his own shirt and pants. Dirty water and paint slid down his body. The colors were like a monster that was plunging its claws into the boy's body. The cubicle door appeared to be blocked from the outside. The boy had his head lowered, hugging his clothes. He rammed against the door. He had no face, so Chin Guk could not see his expression and could not hear his voice. He had no idea whether the boy was crying or screaming for help. Chin Guk could only see that the boy was ramming his body against the door until the door blasted open. He stood at the entrance of the cubicle barefooted, holding the dirty clothes. His arms dangled by his side, cut open by the wooden chips from when he rammed them against the door. Blood leaked out the open wounds, but paint seeped back into the wounds. Pressured, uneasy, struggling to breathe, he twisted his head. The faceless boy scanned the empty toilet. The bullies had already left, but their venomous words lingered in the toilet. The boy stood at the cubicle entrance for a long time. He slowly took up his hands and put the wet clothes back on one by one. Other than his arms, he was not injured, but his body kept shaking from pain. The middle of his pants was slid open, and there was a large hole on the back of his shirt. The boy put on all the clothes, and a poor monster was reflected in the water that puddled on the ground. He wiped his face and tried to walk toward the toilet door. The light from the corridor filtered into the toilet. The entrance was bright, bright enough to cast a clear shine on the boy's current appearance right to the point that he had nowhere to hide. He pulled his feet back. He wore the dirty clothes and walked back into the seventh cubicle. Leaning against the wall, the boy's body slowly slid down the wall. He was curled up in the corner. The faceless face looked at the toilet entrance, he appeared to be waiting for the lights to go out. The image did not end there. The boy looked for a long time before lifting his head. The faceless face looked at Chin Go like he knew someone was watching him. Would you like to be my friend? This question drifted into Chin Ji's ears. He heard it clearly, but when he turned to the source, there was nothing there. Did it come from the phone? That's impossible. The video stopped at the last frame. The faceless boy was curled up in the corner of the cubicle with his face turned to Chin Go like he was waiting for Chin Ji's answer. I am willing to be your friend. Even though what you said sounded like a curse. Chen Guk did not mind a curse, his whole life started with a cursed love letter. Without that letter, during his first mission, he would have died at Wang Qi's hand. 
Chen Good gave his promise, but the boy in the phone retained his posture. Looking away from the phone, there was nothing inside the seventh cubicle, but the phone could capture the faceless boy so clearly. Can you hear me? Chen Gu tried to communicate with the boy, but there was no reply. He waited for a long time before the image on the phone started to change again. The door of the seventh cubicle was pulled open, and a blood-red hand reached in. The hand touched the faceless boy lightly. He seemed to communicate with the boy, and the faceless boy nodded lightly. Then the faceless boy was led away by the hand toward the other side of the door and disappeared. The bloody hand came from inside the door? What did he tell the boy? Chin Gu was suddenly reminded of the question that he had heard. Did the owner of the hand tell the boy what I heard? Would you like to be my friend? The faceless boy agreed and then disappeared? Chin Gu tried to analyze the situation. The faceless boy was Lin Cici. He did not push open a door, that bloody hand had reached out from inside the door. In other words, there was a door inside the toilet cubicle. The hand's owner had invited Lin Cici, and the latter had accepted. In that case, the bloody hand was the real door pusher. Chapter 819 We might not be enemies after so many twists and turns, Chin Gu had finally found the ghost school's real owner. Even though it was just a glimpse of the person's hand, that was already quite a big clue. Just now I heard someone ask, Would you like to be my friend? Did it come from inside the phone? But I heard it by the side of my ear so clearly. It probably wasn't meant for Lin Cici, but for me. Chen Gu turned back to look. The blood vessels on the wall had started to peel like fallen leaves in autumn. They had lost their life. Did you make the promise with him? Wang Yicheng suddenly spoke on Chen Ji's back. He buried his head in Chen Ji's shoulders. His voice was very soft, so one could not hear it if one did not listen carefully. I suppose so. He looked so lonely. Chen Ji's neck was pulled tight by Wang Yicheng. Their bodies were stuck together, and he could feel Wang Yicheng's body temperature dropping. His friends are all dead, all dead. The sound of dripping came from behind Chen Gu. He felt wetness on his shoulders. Turning back to see, he realized that his left shoulder was already soaked with blood. It was a wide spread of red, and it looked eye-catching. You. Chen Gu shook Wang Yicheng on his back. The boy waved his arms weakly about as he grabbed at the air. Blood tears leaked from his shut eyes. Have you remembered something? By retuning to this place, Wang Yicheng's memory had awakened. He kept his eyes closed, but just from hearing that sentence from Chen Gu, he knew what had happened. There's no escape. Since you have promised that person, he will come to find you. No matter where you go, he will find you. Wang Yicheng's voice had a big change. He had sunk into madness, completely different from the weak and cowardly boy from before. Even if he doesn't come to find me, I will go to find him. I like to make friends, from all meanings of the word. Chen Gu had many friends, but they were not by his side at the moment, so he wished to get to know some new friends. The blood from Wang Yicheng's eyes slid down his cheeks. His shirt was dyed red. Blood bloomed like flowers on his skin. This boy who looked so weak had the potential to become a red specter. I'm getting more interested in the owner of this school. Just how did he manage to pull all of you one by one into the door? Chen Gu did not think that the few club members that he had randomly picked would be so special. Of course, he was lucky, but from another perspective, it explained the scary factor of the school of the afterlife. A half-red specter was able to handle a normal two-star scenario, but in the school of the afterlife, Chin Gu had already encountered several red specters and potential red specters. Is the constant joking a way to hide the panic in your heart? Hearing Wang Yicheng say that, Chin Gu confirmed further that the young man had recovered his memory. The previous Wang Yicheng was cowardly and feeble, he would never say anything remotely confrontational and would only follow orders. I'm not joking. To have the despair to open the door, he must have possessed hope before. Granted, the hope must have been crushed by now. 
I sincerely wish to help him, and becoming his friend will be the first step. Chen Ge carried Wang Yicheng to head to the door. Have you realized that most of the students here have a sad childhood or a physical deformity or that their personality has been made twisted by outside influence? Everyone has their own sad past. What is it that you wish to say? I'm curious what the owner has experienced. As the door pusher, what has happened in his past to enable him to push open so many doors? Agreeing to be his friend means that you'll be stuck here forever. This school didn't used to be so big. The addition of despair and pain only made it into what it is now. After Wang Yicheng said that, his eyes stopped tearing blood, but his body continued shaking. Looks like you know many things. Chinga felt like this school was similar to his haunted house. However, School of Afterlife went after students with despair or was attracting students who radiated the presence of despair while Chin Ji's haunted house welcomed everyone. This school's been in existence for many years, has it? All I can remember is that once I opened my eyes, I was here. I do not have the experience, like Zhang Ju. I died at this school and was reborn here. I've already forgotten many things. I only know that this school has been growing in size. Then why are you here? Is this Lin Cici's punishment for you? Chinga asked another question he was curious about. Wang Yicheng answered after a long pause. I was the only person that Lin Cici forgave. The only reason I came here is, after Lin Cici, I became his replacement. The students' anxiety and fear transformed into bullying, and I became their target. One night, on the brink of a breakdown, the door found me. Then you entered it? Based on what Zhang Ju said, when the door showed up for the first time, it started a distance away and slowly got closer to you. Chen Ge had not finished and he was interrupted by Wang Yicheng. He was passive, and I was the active party. I wanted to find a place where I could hide. Plus, Wang Yicheng hesitated for a long time before he revealed the other secret. The hand that reached out then was covered in paint. That was Lin Cici's hand. He was inviting me, and I wanted to say sorry to him in person. That day, I actually reported it to the teacher, but he didn't come. What else do you know about Lin Cici and this door? That's all. Since entering the door, I haven't seen Lin Cici. Until today, I haven't seen him. Wang Yicheng let go off his hands. You can put me down now. Are you sure you're not lying? Chen Ge put down Wang Yicheng. At the door of the Western Campus Toilet, once your memory returned, the school's administrators showed up immediately. If I didn't knock you out, I'm afraid we would have been captured. You are treated differently from Zhang Ju and Zhu Long. That's probably because Lin Cici is my friend, and I am Lin Cici's friend. The group walked past the seven cubicles. This place recorded what had happened to Lin Cici, but the phone had probably only captured part of it. I really can't imagine what has the door pusher experienced. As they were about to leave the toilet, Chen Gu turned to look at the seventh cubicle. The only thing confirmed is that the door is in the seventh cubicle. To get to know the school's owner, we need to investigate everything that has happened inside this toilet in this school. With the current cubicles, Chen Gu planned to head to three places next, the school's data filing room, the school library, and the art room in the lab building that he had promised Joe Tuesday Chapter 820, they've arrived information about the school's owner, could be found in the data filing room, the mirror leading to the blood world might be found in the school's library, and the art room was where Chen Gu had promised to take Zhou Tuesday, where should we go first? Chen Gu turned to Zhou Tu. I know the location of the art club and the scene from your dream. I can take you there now, but are you prepared to recover your memory? Zhou Tu had not communicated much with Chen Gu. The latter's sudden question stunned Zhou Tu's day. Before he recovered his memory, he wished to know what he had forgotten. But after seeing what had happened to Zhang Ju and Wang Yicheng, he started to hesitate. Are you ready to face your past? With the memory still lost, you are just an unimportant student here, you can forget about all your troubles and live this repeated peaceful day again and again. Once the memory loosens, you will be targeted by the school administrators, 
and there is no way back, Chin Gu reminded Zhou Tuesday. He was testing the young man as well. Of all the club members, Zhou Tu was the most opinionated. I thought about it and believe it's better to have my memory recovered. Without a past, no matter how comfortable life is, it's just a self-made lie. Zhou Tu's eyes moved to Zhang Ju and Wang Yicheng. I wonder if my real self will scare me to death. I think you'd better give it more consideration, Zhang Ju said with a scorched voice. He turned his burned face around. An uncomfortable feeling comes from you. The real you must be a very scary monster. Zhou Tu did not know how to reply. His eyes wandered, and the hesitation returned. We'll go to the filing room first, so you will have more time to consider. Chen Gu patted Zhou Tu's shoulder. Don't be pressured. No matter your decision, I'll respect it. Thank you. Zhou Tu lowered his head to think. Zhang Ju nudged Chen Gu slightly. His real self should be really scary. If he can recover his memory, no matter what you wish to do next, it will make things much simpler. Everyone has their own choice to make. I will not intervene. But aren't you helping us recover our pasts to gather energy so that we can help you complete your goal? Zhang Ju was confused. He remembered what Chen Gu had said earlier. They were merely helping each other, or to put it more plainly, using each other. I once read the following from a book. Rose never asks why, and she never asks for a thank you. She blooms because she wishes to bloom. Even though I can't be that selfless, at least I've experienced the pain that you've experienced, and seeing you all reminds me of myself. Chen Gu turned to the other members seriously. There is one more thing I wish to emphasize. Our relationship is not using each other, we're in a mutually beneficial relationship, and mutual respect is the foundation. Hearing Chen Ji's voice, at that moment, all the specters seemed to forget that this man before them was just a normal human being. But perhaps that was because he still had not recovered his memory. Zhang Ju and Zhu Long nodded as they fell in line behind Chen Gu. Wang Yicheng opened his bloody eyes and gave Chen Gu an approving nod. Zhou Tu, who walked at the back, was lost in his thoughts, but determination started to fill his eyes. Returning to the corridor, before Chen Gu started to move, he felt that something was not right. There was a thick stench in the air, and he had smelled it in the lab before. A bad feeling rose in his heart. The more Chen Gu moved forward, the more pressured he felt. It was like he was wading into a lake, and a chill assaulted him from all sides. Have those upside-down monsters returned? Chen Gu did not lower his head to look. Things had already happened. Lowering his head would only confuse his mind. What he needed to do was leave the building as fast as possible. Standing next to Zhang Ju, Chen Gu narrowed his eyes and asked in a low voice, Do you see those monsters in the corridor? Monsters? Zhang Ju stared down the corridor. The blood on his body slid down his jacket. There appears to be something there, but they don't seem like they can hurt us. As he finished, Zhang Ju saw his hair float upward like there was an invisible baby on the ceiling pulling on his hair. Small wounds started to appear on the bodies of Zhang Ju and Wang Yicheng. The monsters had been drawn there by the two of them. I can't see them, so how did they manage to hurt me? The wounds on Zhang Ju's face kept bleeding. Blood vessels danced all over his body. Even though his memory had awakened, he had not mastered how to use his power. If you look upside down, you can see them, but I don't suggest you do so. Why not? Because seeing them will only make your despair deepen. Chen Gu signaled for the group to move down the stairs. It was hard to tell whether the monsters were attacking Zhang Ju and Wang Yicheng out of natural instinct or because something was ordering them to do so. If it was the latter, things would be much more troublesome. The stench around them thickened, and more wounds appeared on Zhang Ju and Wang Yicheng's bodies. It was worth noting that with every new wound, there would be a small black thread that dug into their bodies. The thing looked like a curse. The group raced to the corner of the third floor, and Wang Yicheng started to weaken. His footsteps started to slow. 
I can feel many things biting my body. The memory is becoming blurry again. Mr. Bai, things are not looking good. There may be more of them downstairs, Zhou Tu said softly. When they reached the third floor, the stench hit them like a wall, and the strange thing was that the stench seemed to originate from beside their bodies. Bending down, like when he was picking up the blade, Zhou Tu looked toward the spot where the stench came from. In the empty space between him and Wang Yicheng, there was an inverted human face. The monster had no skin, so his flesh and muscles were stuck to his clothes. Blood pumped underneath his clothes, and the blood stuck to the fabric, dyeing the entire shirt red. Wang. Wang Yicheng, the thing is just in front of you. Zhou Tu screamed. His memory had not awakened. Seeing a scene like that scared him so much that he almost fell down the stairs. Told you not to look, didn't I? Chen Gu carried Wang Yicheng and stepped at the spot where the stench was the thickest and then flew down the stairs. Zhou Tu held his chest. The spot that Chen Gu had stepped on was where the monster's head was. Okay, I get it now. When they reached the second floor, the noxious fumes filled the corridor. Zhu Long, whose memory had loosened, also became the monster's target. Zhang Zhu could hold on, but not Zhu Long and Wang Yicheng. They were moving because Zhou Tu and Chen Gu were dragging them.